Hello? Hello? Okay now. Okay, can you guys hear me? <laughs> Are we okay? Clear? Hello? Hello? Okay. So can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So we're back again. Um, I don't know what happened. It got stuck. So let's just continue on. Um, where were we earlier? Uh, we were talking about nematodes, right? Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think the second slide we stopped at the second slide. So um, let me just review you guys review for the record for our new records. Um, adult worms. There are four structures that may be present in the cephalic region. That includes your teeth, hooks, plates, papilla. Um, the functions are as follows: abrasion, attachment, and sensory response. Okay, sorry. All right. Sir, di pa po kayo nakapag-share sa Google. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I can see, I can see. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Here you go. Is it sharing now? Is it sharing now? Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. Now, um, the next thing that you need to remember is the supporting, uh, the supporting body wall. Um, as I mentioned before, when you cut an organism in half, or when you cut the roundworm in half. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see three layers, okay? And in these three layers, you might encounter something like this. I don't know what happened. Hopefully, nothing. <clears throat> hopefully, nothing happened. Nothing happens like what we had, what we had earlier. So basically, you'll see three layers, okay? Uh, another one. Oh no, we could just go copy and paste. We we'll just go like this, and then. Mm. Let's make another one like this and another one inside another one. All right, so like this and then like, yeah, like that. And another one. Okay, so you have one, two, three layers and another one for the insides. Okay, for the insides. Okay. So that's basically the three layers that we're talking about, um, telling you guys about. Uh, first one is the outer layer. Second one is your um, subcuticular layer or the subcuticular subcuticular epithelium. All right, and of course your layer of muscles. We're going to put it as pink because muscles are pink. Okay, so this is what you're going to see in the inside. This is of course the innards. Um, these the fluid matrix that are that are common uh, commonly seen so what we're talking about is the outer layer of course okay from the outer layer to the inner layer so enough about that that's usually not going to be asked in the board exams but the next thing that you need to know is the most important one the most basic of all things that you need to remember when it comes to nematodes there are three stages or three life cycles that you need to Remember, because you in the exams you might be asked the question, you might be asked the question, what is the infectious stage or the infectious stage? Okay, so certain terminologies. What do you mean by infectious stage, by the way, um, or the infective stage? A better terminology would be the infective stage. For example, for example, um, what is the infect? The, you might be asked the question, what is the infective stage of Ascaris lumbricoides? Okay, so um, let's go into our, uh, uh, let's go to the students. Let's see if they can answer. Um, let's talk with Maria Christina um, McKay. All right, what do you mean by infective stage before we continue our discussion? Ano po, yung parasite na kapag infect na po siya dun sa host. Okay. All right, so that is actually a uh, that's actually a vague a vague description, but it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. It's actually quite correct. Somebody raised his hand. Okay, James Paul on the roll. Okay, James Paul. All right, what's your um, morphology of the parasite that initiates infection? Okay, it's basically the same, the, tra the translation of what McKay said. Thank you so much, James Paul. So both of you guys are correct. It's a little bit vague, but that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, it is the stage of the organism in which it can cause a disease. Okay? Or parasitism. Okay? So, you might hear this several times over and over again. I want you guys to remember what it means because throughout our discussion, not just in nematodes, not just in trematodes, cystodes, and pro protozoans, 
you are going to keep on hearing these types of terminologies or these, this terminology over and over again. I want, you to, I want you to remember that in each organism, they are going to ask a question, what is the infective stage? You are going to expect, what is the infective stage? All right? Okay ba, Nigel? Is that okay? Ayan na. Smile lang si Nigel. Smile ka na lang, Nigel. Nahirap. <laughs> Nigel, okay ka pa? <laughs> All right. Now, let's move on to the uh, st life cycle, the stages in the life cycle of nematodes. Um, we, have the, we have the egg stage, the larval stage, and the adult stage. What I want you guys to remember is the larval stage. In some species of, uh, in some species of nematodes, okay, it is important that you guys remember the R, the R1, R2, L, F, F, uh, F1, F2. What do you mean by R1, R, R1, R2? Um, in some species. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to delve deeper what what it means. But what I want you guys to remember is that there are some species where it's important to talk about the rabditiform, rabditiform and the filariform larva of organisms. It's important, especially in topics that include roundworms and Strongyloides tercoralis, okay? Roundworms, ah, sorry, um, let me, uh, hookworms, sorry, hookworms and Strongyloides tercoralis. Now, as an advanced, advanced part of our lecture, I want to ask the question in the, in the chat box. A, B, D, C, America's best dance group. I want you guys to tell me what are the four species of hookworms before we before we go to the before we before we actually talk about it so i want you guys to just chat about it okay hookworms okay so you guys can you guys can um you guys can chat it or you guys can leave it in our chat i'll post this as a question and we'll come back to this later when we go to our discussion on hookworms um the reason why I put that, uh, that I, uh, I typed in that um, that mnemonic is because you guys have Amanda. Amanda loves asking for how well do uh, how can we memorize this, sir? Okay, so that's she had the audacity to ask that question, which is quite rare for some of some students. So she has an inquisitive mind, diba? So ABDC America's best dance group yun yung ano yun yung ano ko yun yung ano ko yun yung shortcut ko but I want you guys to I want you guys to remember this one because this is important when you're talking about hookworms we'll come back to that later I leave I'll I leave it as a question and you guys can just type in the question uh, your your answers hookworms oh di ba nilagay ko pa dono with question mark hookworms what is this sir what are you telling us ganon now, let's move on to a question that is not a little not that important, but let's talk about it still. Differentiate the morphology of adult male and female nematodes. So, of um well, I don't want you guys to rem uh, remember this, but what I want you to keep in mind is that males have curvier tails and they are shorter in terms of in the worm world or in the nematode world, okay? Um, females are much larger and they have pointed tails. What I want you guys to take from this in this particular slide is that in the world of parasitology, specifically for, for nematodes or roundworms, females are larger. Okay, females are larger. Why? Because they carry the the eggs, or they may carry they might carry the the larva itself if they are the they are larv larviparous. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll go to those terms later, but. Um, you might be asked a question, which of the following about parasites or what about nematodes is correct? So that's the reason why I want you guys to keep uh, to have this in your minds, okay? Um, so you might, uh, you might be asked a question, which of the following is not a characteristic of a male nematode? So that's why I'm posing these questions. It's not, it's not very important, if I might say, because it is, a common, it is common knowledge for people who have taken the, the course already. For um, for you guys, I'm not gonna dwell into this particular question. Now, classification of based uh, classification of nematodes based on the presence of chemoreceptors. Um, based on the presence of chemoreceptors, we have what you call the phasmids and the phasmids. Ah, uh, sorry, the phasmid, okay, and the aphasmid, okay, meaning that there is uh, there is a lack of phasmid receptors, okay, so. We're going to describe each 
they have um, uh, fast mids. Uh, they have the cephalic receptors. Okay, when you when you talk about a fast mids, they have comal. Uh, they have caudal. <clears throat> they have caudal chemoreceptors. What do I mean by cephalic? It is on the upper portion. So when you look at when you look at Mark Segi, his cephalic portion is in his head, right? And his caudal region would be somewhere below his torso. Okay? So anatomy and physiology, okay? All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, clear? Is that slide clear? Oh, people are answering in the chat. Oh my God, people are active. Okay. All right, I love it. People are actually active. Pero hindi nila finalo yung ano ko, yung, yung, aking, uh, yung aking shortcut, ABDC. America's Best Dance Group. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys why it's important that you remember it this way. Okay? Para hindi na kayo mahirapan. Kasi sino, ginawa ninyo ABCD eh. Mamaya, mamaya natin pag-usapan kung bakit, kung bakit important yung ABDC na yan. Okay? Now, let's talk about nematodes with cephalic receptors. So, um, nematodes with cephalic receptors uh, that lack cephalic receptors are known as your um, aphasmids, Right? So there are three organisms that uh, among the, there are all organisms uh, all parasites that we're going to talk about right now um, are considered phasmids, meaning that they have their cephal they, meaning that they have chemoreceptors in the cephalic region. But the three uh, three exceptions to those would be Trichinella spiralis, Capillaria filipinensis, and Trichuris trichiura. Okay, now. We can classify them based on where what habitats they they in, the the adult worms inhabit. If for those uh, for T C or um, Trichinella spiralis and Capillaria filipinensis, it inhabits the small intestine, whilst whilst the other one inhabits the large intestine. Trichuris trichura. Okay. Okay. So, let's go on a little bit deeper to phasmids, okay? Phasmids that inhabit the large intestine and phasmids that inhabit the tissue. Or sorry, the intestines or the small intestines. And there are phasmids that inhabit the tissue. We're going to talk about hookworms and strongyloides tercoralis in small, in the, if, they inha if, they, if they are phasmids that inhabit the that inhabit the small intestines, while phasmid that inhabit the tissue. Can you guys give me examples of tissue nematodes? So again, so thank you for the answers. I love it. Uh, thank you for the answers. Where is Amanda? Amanda is usually the one asking questions about about um, about uh, mnemonics. So I, I'm expecting Amanda to be the one who is. Who is, who is leading the, the discussion when it comes to mnemonics, all right? So she's the queen of, she's the queen of mnemonics. Where are you, Amanda? Okay. Oh, oh, there you are. Hello, Amanda. All right. Now, um, I want you guys to remember TCT because these are your, uh, these are your phasmids and they're inhabit, uh, uh, these are your aphasmids and then there's other ones, which is the phasmids. Um, I don't have a shortcut for that one. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. But um, organisms that are phasmids that inhabit the tissue will have will be your Wuchiriria bancrofti and Brugia malai. Okay. Now let's talk about the egg laying characteristics of nematodes. One could be or uh, one could be oviparous. Another another behavioral characteristics or egg laying characteristics or egg laying behaviors could be uh, could be one of the egg laying behaviors could be oviviparous and larviparous or viviparous. Okay, so what's the difference between these things? Now, if the organism is oviparous, it lays unembryonated eggs. If the organism is oviparous. The organism, the, or the eggs that it lays is embryonated. Larvae parus, it lays larvae. Okay? Alright? So it lays the larva. Uh, the larva itself. Okay? So parang caterpillar lang, no? Parang caterpillar lang. May mga eggs, di ba? Ganon. And there's a larva. Ay, hindi pala caterpillar. Yung mga mosquitoes, they have larva. They have the larval stage also. Okay? So, um... 
we'll we'll talk about the body systems of nematodes. Uh, the different body systems of adult nematodes are suspended in what cavities? This is what you call the pseudo seal. Okay, pseudo seal, or in some books, in, according to my research, it's pseudo sealum. Okay, in most of my review books, in most of my review books, you'd see pseudo sealum. Okay, but in uh, in review question, reviewer questions, they would say pseudo seal. Okay? Now, what's the function? What are the functions involved in this body cavity or in this um, um, body system? Uh, what body systems are included in the pseudo seal? So you have the digestive tract, of course, from mouth to anus. Reproductive systems. This could include the. This include. This could include the. Uh, or the ovary and the and the and the rudimentary testes. Okay, if it is an organism that is hermaphroditic, that is another term. We're talk, we'll talk about that later in the excretory system. So some organisms, some uh, some members of phylum nematoda have a have a have a have an excretory system that is separate from their digestive system. But that's not really usually. Uh, but that's not really important when it's uh, when it, it when it comes to the board exam. Just uh, just a bit of knowledge for you guys. So um, true or false? All nematodes are hermaphroditic. Ooh. True or false? I'll ask this question. All nematodes are hermaphroditic. All right. So because Mark said false, give me an give me an organism that is not hermaphroditic. Give me a nematode, an example of a nematode that is that reproduces sexually. Okay? Patay. Hello, sir. Walang ganun. Nagsagot lang ako eh. <laughs> Alright. James Paul. Ascaris po, sir. Ascaris nice. lang gregoides. Very good. Very good. Very good. What about, um, what about a nematode that is hermaphroditic? Sige nga. Tingnan natin kung may mga sasagot ang mga students. Sabi kasi ni, ano, eh, ni Mark Segi, false daw eh. All nematodes are hermaphroditic. Give me an example of a nematode that is hermaphroditic or reproduces asexually. James Paul again. Talaga, talagang active si James Paul ngayon. Nakareceive ka ba ng, ano, ng reward from my secretary, James Paul, before you answer the question? Yes, sir. D dumating? Opo. Alright. Oh, di ba talaga totoo? Oh, hindi, hindi scam si Sir Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Legit pala talaga si Sir Manuel. Kaya pala active talaga to si James Paul, no? Strongyloides. Yes. Thank you so much. So, Strongyloides tercoralis is actually one of those nematodes that I'm talking about. They reproduce asexually. Oh, di ba talaga? Talaga si James Paul. Kaya active si James Paul. Kasi alam niyang hindi scam si Sir Manuel. Legit talaga na nagsisend. What about Johaili? Did Johaili receive her, her reward? Yes po. Talaga? Totoo? Totoo ba, Johaili? Nakalagay po um, for Sir Manuel. Parang oh, mali, pa yung, mali talaga yung grammar din ng, ano ko, no? ng secretary ko. No? From Sir Manuel dapat, di ba? Kasi... <laughs> But anyway, thank you so thank you for informing us. Okay, baka mamaya kasi ano. Last time kasi may mga students ako hindi naka-receive. Parang Sir Marco, parang si Adrian dati hindi naka-receive ata ng 100 niya. So baka kasi baka pinakit na ni ano ko nung secretary ko. So baka ano lang, wala lang. Gusto ko lang i-confirm. Minsan lang naman ako mag-confirm and thankfully she gave the she gave the she gave you guys the rewards. All right. Now uh, this component fulfills the function of the blood in nematodes. Okay, so it fulfills the function of the blood in nematodes. This is known as your hemolymph. Okay, so they don't have bone marrow, of course. All right, they don't have a bone marrow. So, of course, they would just have a fluid inside them. And this fluid is, is, uh, is filtered out through the whole worm's body. Okay, so uh, it's combined. Okay, so it has a combined it has a combined uh, function of both of both um, of both the circulatory system as well as the lymphatic system. So totoo pala, totoo sir, meron din silang blood. It's kind of like the blood but it's not really the blood. 
Then's the term hemolymph. Okay. Now, what's the function? Other functions of this, aside from being, uh, aside from being the fluid matrix inside these worms. Obviously, they function as the, uh, they they function in what you call the hydroskeletal function, meaning that they are capable of motility because of this one. All right. So hence, one of their fun one of the function is locomotion. It maintains the body shape. The reason why it is a it is considered as a worm. Or the shape of the worm, oh, it, it resembles the shape of a round worm. Is because of this. It's because of this hydrolymph. If it, if it's not, if there, if there's no hydrolymph, such as such as it, such as the cases of those uh, of those um, specimens that you might see in the exam room or in the laboratory room, in your laboratory classes, the ones that are uh, the ones that are immersed in formaldehyde. They're already flat, right? So, sir, hindi naman to roundworm, sir. Flatworm na to. Hoy, huwag piloso po. Ibang itsura ng flatworm, ha? Nigel, ha? Naging flat lang kasi na, kasi na dehydrate. Dahil dun sa ano? <laughs> dahil sa formalin. Alright, and it also maintains its position into the host. So, it, it is important in the hydroskeletal function aside from the circulatory and the lymphatic function of, this, uh, of, the, uh, of the worms. Alright, now... Let's talk about the esophageal structures of the worms. Um, there are several esophageal structures that you might encounter. Um, the most important uh, esophageal structure that you, uh, the, the two most important is of course the filariform, uh, the filariform structure of the esophagus and the rhabditiform uh, esophageal stru structure. Why? Because it is a commonly asked question. Filariform esophageal structures are found in Strongyloides cercoralis. Well, the rhabditiform um, esophageal structures are found in Interobus vermicularis, okay? Spiruroid, strongyliform, and stichosoma are not as important, okay? Uh, most of the time, you would be, you would be, you might encounter this uh, in the exams, okay? Um, filariform, not to be confused with filariform and rhabditiform larva, the, we're talking about the esophageal structures, all right, the esophageal structures. Okay. So spiruroid, of course, filarial worms. Okay. Strongyliform is seen in ancylostoma species. Necator also. I uh, I think I omitted this in my uh, in my in my recent lecture. So I changed this to hookworm. So you guys just change it to hookworm. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, let's move on to the next thing that you need to remember when it comes to the adult nematode structures. The circumesophageal commissure, all right? The most important neuronal structure. This is what you call the, um, according to some scientists, the, the circumesophageal uh, circum ring commissure is actually the brain or the, the, the brain of an adult nematode, Okay. So chemoreceptors sends the transmission to uh, to this particular structure, the neuron, the circumesophageal, sorry, the circumesophageal ring commissure. So this is considered, according to some scientists, there are theories, of course, because there's no there's, there's no structure, there's no brain structure, so it's probably just a ring structure, right? So it's a circumesophageal ring commissure. It's located near. The esophageal uh, near the esophagus of the organism. It could be the whole esophag. It could be the whole esophagus. Hence the term commissure, or it could be a bundle of nerve fibers. Okay, that uh, that forms a ring structure. Okay, so clear, 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 ba, clear, ba, Christine, Maria, Christina, or McKay, clear. Yes, bro. All right, I love it. She's kind of active. She's kind of not. But that, but that's okay, girl. All right. Now let's talk about the uh, minute tactile structures in adult nematodes that function as receptor organs. So receptors are different from actual nerve fi fibers that function as neurons. Okay. So uh, sorry, that functions as the brain. So if you have the brain, of course, you're going to have the you're going to have you're going to have receptors or sensory receptors. Okay. So you have papillae. Uh, papillae, all right? And the structures are different depending on the phasmid, the phasmid. Whether or not, uh, whether or not the organism is an aphasmid or a phasmid. So if it's a, so if it's a phasmid, it's the opposite 
It's located in the cephalic or cervical region. What do you mean by the cervical region naman, sir? May cervix din ba ang mga uod, sir? Wala. Huwag kayong charotera. Walang cervix ang mga uod, ha? Nakakaloka. Nakakaloka. Baka mamaya. Baka mamaya. Sabi kasi ni Sir Manuel, may cervical region ang mga ano, ang mga uod. Hindi. Alright? The cervical region is also known as the cephalic region. Because you know, um, uh, the certain um, zoologists, they ha they like to use syno terms that are synony synonymous to, it, to one another. So cervical region, parang yung cervical spine mo lang yan, Nigel. Okay? So wala ka namang cervix sa ulo mo, diba? Pero ano, pero may cervical spine ka. So ganon, diba? Alright? So for phasmids, Again, it's the opposite. So, phasmids, they have a cephalic, uh, a cephalic, um, what do you call this? They have a cephalic, uh, a cephalic structure, hence that, con that considers them a phasmi uh, a phasmidic organism. And their papillae is located in the post-anal region. Right? So, saan ba ang post-anal region? Usually sa dulo yun ng bulate. Okay? Usually sa dulo ng bulate. Okay? Now, mag-experiment pa tayo ng example ng mga bulate? No, no, there's no need. Because we're going to talk about nematode eggs next. Nematode eggs undergo how many fundamental stages? There are four fundamental stages. Then they become an adult. Okay? Uh, they undergo fundamental stages. Actually, this is what I told you guys earlier. The R1, rabditiform larva. R2, rabditiform larva. F1, filariform larva. And then, and then, uh, and then the F2, filariform larva. But all in all... All in all, including the adult stages or the sexual stages, uh, is actually just five. Okay? So adult worms undergo uh, 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 an egg stage and then they would go into larval stages, four larval stages, and then in an adult. Okay? So medyo confusing na siya when we go to flatworms because meron pa tayong mga circaria, metacircaria, yung mga ganon. So let's make it easy for us and let's di dissect things one at a time. Okay? Huwag masyadong nagmamadali. Di ba, Jenilyn Marzan? No? Huwag masyadong nagmamadali kapag jojowa. Alright? Di ba? Para cytology at bacteriology muna before jumowa. Okay? Hindi ko sinasabi na may jowa ka ngayon, nakatext mo siya ngayon. But, but, uh, all I'm saying is let's just take the lessons one at a time. Similar to our romantic interests. Okay, Jenilyn? Pwede mo bang i-promise sa akin yan? Pagpasa ko na sir ng board exam or pagkapasok ko na ng med school, saka na ako mag, ano, saka na ako mag, mag, mag jojowa. Bakit mag med school? Kasi wala ka na sa, pag graduate mo ng med school, wala ka na sa kalendaryo, syempre. Dapat doon ka na lumalande. Mag-practice na kayo ng jowa mo ng ano, nung clinical pres presentations, di ba? Kaya kahanap ng jowa sa med school. Okay? Ganun ang, ano, ganun ang kwento sa akin ng mga friends ko na doktor na ngayon eh. Sabi ko, hindi ako nag-jowa nung medtech kasi sa med school ako mag jowa Kasi pagkatapos, kasi pag-graduate ko ng med school, may pa, meron pa sila, five years yon um, before they take the board exam, wala ka na sa kalendaryo, di ba? Most probably, there might be malformations or uh, childhood birth defects dun sa anak mo kapag ka ganun, pagka, 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 uh, pre-menopausal pre baby yung anak mo, di ba? So, dapat, Jenilyn, if ever you are going to medical school, to medical school ka na maghanap ng jowa. Tapos, kailangan yung jowa na pipiliin mo, hindi yung F-boy. Okay? Jenilyn, okay ba? Okay lang ba? I-promise mo sa akin, hindi F-boy. Usapang, yes, usapang matino, Jenilyn, ha? Alright. Let's move on na. Okay? Now, because we're taking our time discussing these things, let's talk about the uh, molting of nematodes. This is termed as ichdysis. Okay? This molting stage occurs in what stages? It usually occurs in between two stages. Usually, molting occurs in filariform larval stages. That's why in some of the, some of the microscope, microscope slides that you would see in the internet, you would see certain... Uh, cer parang nagbabalat na mga ano... Uh, that's considered as molting. The scientific term for molting is, of course, ichdysis. Okay? So, they undergo ichdysis. So, it occurs in between two stages. So, for la kaya, kaya nga tayo may filariform larva 1, filariform larva 2, because we want to see, uh, because the organism is shedding off the excess skin in order for it to grow. Similar to snakes. So, snakes have their own form of ichdysis. Okay? They're sloughing off the outer portion of the scales. But for larva, 
it's the cuticle. Uh, but for uh, sorry, but for nematodes or worms in general, it's the cuticles. Okay, the cutilin, cuticle molting. Okay, now. What are the two types of life cycles that are observed in nematodes? So there are two types, of course, guys. So don't, please don't forget, okay? There's a direct and indirect life cycle. So the direct life cycle is pretty straightforward, okay? It's pretty straightforward. You, ga you guys get one host, one definitive, uh, one host, which is basically the definitive host, and then there are what, uh, where the larval stages uh, develop. So, for example, may ask us si Mark Segi. Right, and in his in his country, we're not going to say the country because we might get demonetized. Mark Mark Segi, right? I'm using you as an example. All right. So for example, he is in a country where there is not a lot of plumbing. So pag nagpupupu si Mark Segi in the ground lang, right? Or in or in, yeah, in the ground lang. So he has ascaris. All right, and then si Nigel na isang bata, mahilig maglaro. Diba? Mahilig maglaro sa lupaan. Three days ago, three days ago, dun, nag, dun sa area or dun sa spot na nagpupo si, Ni, si Mark, dun naman naglaro si Nigel. Diba? So, directly, so she got it directly from Mark Segi. Kumbaga. So, that's the direct life cycle. One definitive host lang. Kasi si Nigel yung nakakuha. So, siya yung definitive host. Okay? So, ang carrier natin or patient zero natin is Mark Segi. Ganon. Alright? Yun yung Mark, yun yung, yun yung Mark Segi, sorry, Mark Segi, direct life cycle. Now, for indirect life cycle, we have what you call two hosts. Uh, so we have what you call an intermediate host. Aside from a definitive host, you're going to encounter the term intermediate host. The definitive host harbors the, or carries the adult or the sexual stages, while the intermediate host carries the larval stages, specifically the rabditiform larval stages. Okay? So, clear ba yun? Clear. Clear. Mamaya ko kayo bibigyan ng example ng mga merong intermediate hosts. Okay? But what I want you to get from this particular slide is the importance of a definitive host and an intermediate host. Clear? Clear, Jenny Lynn? So, kailangan ng future doctor boyfriend mo, alam din ang ibig sabihin. Pag hindi alam, naglolokohan lang kayo nun. Alright, Jeneline? Alright, pag, hindi alam, ni, pag hindi alam ng boyfriend mo, pag hindi alam ng future boyfriend mo ang difference of the two life cycles, i-break mo na kaagad. It's, she's not, he is not going to help you out. Wait, wait, baka mamaya maano na naman ako eh. Ma, matulad na naman ako dun sa Junakis number 2 ko. Wait lang. Ano tayo? Hindi tayo, hindi tayo shibuli bumbumbe ha? Hindi. Hindi tayo shibuli. Okay, baka mamaya maano na naman tayo, Mark. Eh. Last time kasi nabigla na lang ako ni ano. Nabigla na lang ako. Eh, ano ko pala? Anak ko pala? Hindi ka naman ganon. Hindi ka sir, naman. Meron din, babae, sir. Ay! Hello! <laughs> Sorry! Hello! Ayan na naman tayo. Ayan na naman tayo. So, ganun ako magsama. <laughs> Ayun na naman tayo. Naloka ako talaga sa mga students. Very lit and very ano na talaga kayo. Before, people are not... People are not very... Anyway, that's enough about that. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So, we'll talk about your future. Your future partner na lang. Let, partner na lang ang gagamitin ko, Mark, na sa susunod para hindi na ako maganyan. Every time na lang talaga. Every time. Last year, ganyan din ang nangyari dun sa isa kong student. Alright? Anyway, let's talk about the mode of at, uh, the attachment, um, the mode of attachment or the manner of attachment of intestinal nematodes. So we could have we could have um, oral attachment to the mucosa, such as the cases of Ancylostoma species. We have the anchorage of attenuated attenuated ends, such as in the cases of Trichuris. We could have penetration to tissue, such as those uh, su such as the larval forms of Strongyloides, or you could have Retention in body folds by pressure, such as in the cases of Ascaris. Okay? So, they could attach to the intestinal mucosa. Or, okay, they could attach. So, sometimes, actually, this is not an attachment, but more or less retention. So, parang sa sobrang laki ni Ascaris, hindi na siya mailabas ng pasyente. Gets nyo? So, kailangan surgical methodologies na. Gets? So, this is, this is how the organism stays. In the body. So, hindi lang siya basta-basta pwedeng itae. Okay? 
guys ah. All right, hindi mo hindi lang siya basta-basta pwedeng ipupu, okay? All right, okay. So be, uh, because maybe it could be like uh, it could be Ascaris. It's too big. It won't go out. It will not get out of the body folds, the intestinal folds rather. All right. So it could be anchored like Trichuris, Trichura, or whipworms, or attendated ends, or it could be it could attach itself. It could attach itself orally into the mucosa. Okay. Now let's move on to let's move on to the next one. Methods of obtaining food. All right, methods of obtaining food or the manner at which the organisms obtain food from the host. Because we're talking about parasitology, of course, we're going to talk about what's the most important thing about parasites. Why do we, why does an organism parasitize an organism? Because we want, they want the benefit from that organism without actually become, without being actively involved, right? Yun yung, the key term of parasitism, the key term that you need to remember in terms of parasitism is that a parasite depends on something to, uh, depends on another organism to, to what? To live out its life cycle completely, right? And in this case, most of the time, most of the time what we're talking about is related to food. So, pwede din bang magkaroon ng parasite? Uh, pwede din ba tayong magkaroon ng parasite na not involved with food? That does not involve food? Um, sino pwede magbigay ng example sa akin ng other forms of parasitism that does not involve food? Very common. I know you guys are in, ano, I know you guys are in an online class. But prior to 2020, what was the most common form of parasitism in your classroom? Ay, nako. Nakalimutan na. Hindi yung utang. Utang is a different term. <laughs> that is that is direct uh, that is directly affecting the patient, the person eh. Ano? Sino magbibigay sa akin? Nangongopya ay. Grabe talaga to si Amanda. Si Amanda talaga ay, si Amanda ayon niyang i-share yung mnemonics. Gusto niya sa kanya lang. Kaya ala, kaya ang una niyang sinabi is kopyahan. Okay. Another form. Sige, I know it's kopyahan is more or less, yeah. I think it's a symbiotic relationship, right? Because the other person would get benefits. Okay, friend kita, right? It's a symbiotic relationship. Kaya mo siya pinapakopya. Tumingi ng one for Ian. Why? Why is it called the... Why did I... Why did I differentiate Amanda's in example from James Paul... James Paul... James Paul's example? Because in... It could be... It could be a form... Amanda is correct, but she could be wrong also. Because maybe kaya nagpapakopya si Amanda or kaya nagpapakopya si Mark is because he wants to have a certain level of friendship with the person he wants to make, who, who wants to, who, who he wants to make copia with. Diba? May benefits eh. Diba? That's considered as a symbiotic relationship. Pero yung nanghihingi ng one-fourth, nabawasan si James Paul ng one-fourth, wala naman siya naging benefit ni thank you. Nga hindi nyo binigyan ng thank you si, ano, si James Paul. Diba ganon? Ganon ang parasitism without any benefit to the other, to the host organism. Gets? 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 Kaya hindi ko na discuss yung ano, may binigay ako sa inyong, may, pinabig, may pinapasa akong note sa inyo, diba, from Sir Marco? Right? Did you guys receive it? It's all blank. As we're discussing, I urge you guys to enter data into that one. Alam, alam ko maraming blanks, diba? Nakita nyo maraming blanks. It's all derived in this la in this slideshow, okay? And would you believe it? Nung nag exam ako, nung nagre-review ako for the board board exam, yan lang ang reviewer ko. And kung hindi ko siya masagutan, babalik lang ako dun sa flashcards ko. Kung hindi ko masagutan ng isang blank, babalik lang ako sa isang flashcards ko. And yun lang babalik-balik. And would you believe it also that students of mine who are reviewing with who are who I've been teaching also relied on those things to review for their parasitology. I think 14, 14 pages, right? 14 pages. I'm not sure if it's 14 pages kasi may updates ako dyan. 14 pages ata or 13 pages, I'm not sure. Parang in-update ko siya kasi parang ano, every year in-update ko siya. So for intensive review purposes, I urge you guys to fill out the uh, fill out the blank in that form. Fill out the blanks, right? There's a lot of blanks because copia can benefit both, uh, can benefit the two people. All right. Thank you, Amanda, for that discussion. All right. So, how do they get? How do they get their food? They could either suck the blood, as in the case of as in the case of hookworms. 
right? They could all they could ingest lice tissue or blood. If the patient, of course, is already bleeding from the inside, they can feed from intestinal content or they could feed on the nourishment from body fluids, as in the cases of tissue nematodes, right? So they can suck the blood directly. Kung katulad ka ni hookworms, yung talagang bubutasin yung, bubutasin yung intestinal wall mo. Or, for example, you're already bleeding on, from the inside, from the attachment of the larva, the filariform larva, and you get lysed tissue or blood, then that is considered also as form of as a form of acquiring the the nutrients and intestinal content uh, feeding on intestinal content as in the case of Ascaris lombricoides because the only time Ascaris can penetrate through parts of the body is in its larval stages. Okay, the the organism, the adult worms usually stay in the intestine for quite some time and they don't travel around. Hindi sila makulit. Unlike yung other organisms that we're, we're going to discuss later. Now, let's move on to another thing about uh, nematodes. Examples of intestinal nematodes. Ayan na ang intestinal nematodes. I, I want you to remember for, for organisms that inhabit the small intestine. Amanda, are you listening? Are you there? I need you to listen to this because this is again another example of of your of mnemonics. Okay, Amanda, I want to see your face when you're listening yes, also. Sir. Okay, Amanda. Kasi gusto ko makita yung reaction ni Amanda eh. <laughs> Alright. So, I want you guys to remember the word cash. Okay? Cash. Because these are the organisms that inhabit the small intestine. So, I'll just write it as S-I. S-I. Nematodes that inhabit the small intestine is cash. Alright? And then, don't forget the word te also. Parang, parang ano, kapag we're talking about the habituation or the, habi the habitat uh, the habitats of the adult worms. We're talking about the adult worms, huh? not the larva. Okay? So, cash includes organisms that, in, that, uh, that inhabit the small intestine. And te are those organisms that, in, that inhabit the large intestine. Okay? Okay, okay? So, we're going to Im omit tissue nematodes because I don't want you guys to get confused. So we, we, were, we will only discuss six nematodes today that are commonly asked in the board exams and in most of the exams that you're... So, anong shortcut natin? Cash te? Wala akong pera? Cash te? Kailangan natin malaman kung ano yung small intestine. Ganon. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng cash te? Sige nga. Sige nga. Sinong magaling dito? Baka, aside from James Paul. I know James Paul will already answer. Maria Cristina Sabado, what is cash? Capillaria astaris, strongyloides before. Very good. What about te? Enterobius trichoris. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. So, cash te. Diba? Alam nyo na. Diba? Nakulangan ng E. Okay? Sorry. Mark Segi ha. Paki ano na lang. Yung E. Paki note na lang. Alright? Yung E. <laughs> Alright. Now, Let's talk about an extra intestinal organisms or an extra intestinal nematodes. Again, this is a high yield, a high yield. Um, sorry, na uh, medyo na pipiyok piyok pa si sir, kasi nga he's undergoing puberty. All right, um, extra intestinal nematodes. Let's talk about extra intestinal nematodes. So when we say extra intestinal, these are the adult worms don't stay in the, in the where in the gastrointestinal tract, right? Or specifically the intestines, all right? So it's neither the small nor the large intestines. Okay, so examples of those would be your would be your Trichinella spiralis, filarial worms, Dracunculus medinensis, Angiostrongulus cantonensis, okay? So we're not going to we're not going to delve deep in Androstrongylus cantonensis, but we're going to discuss it as well. But, but don't worry, we're going to discuss it also. All right? So, um let's go and talk about the habitat of each. Trichinella spiralis is this is the muscles, filarial worms, Loa Loa, Brugia malayi and um Oncocerca volvulus, uh, Mansonella species will be in the lymphatics. Um uh, Dracunculus mendinensis will will go around several places in the body, specifically different tissues. So generally, it's a tissue parasite. And Androstrongylus cantonensis is in the brain. All right? 
So, sa totoo, meron palang brain parasite? Yes, there's a lot of brain parasites, okay? Actually, in the exams, you might encounter the question, which of the following does not involve does not involve CNS infection. So, you might have Nagleria follery, alright? Nagleria follery, Cysticercus larva of um, trich tra tra uh, of tenia species, and then Hymenolepis nena, and then Angiostrongulus cantonensis. Which of the following cannot be, will have adult will have its adult or in, or its definitive will will not stay or habit or will not stay or inhabit the CNS. So you might get those kinds the, you might get these kinds of questions. So that's why I always want you guys to remember high yield questions in in parasitology because the, these are the things that you need to remember. The habitat, the location, of course the disease associations, okay? And of, of course the other names. Because some of the questions they would say they would say which of the following is what, what is the common term? What is the common term? Or they would use the common term in the case studies, right? They would they would use they would use a giant intestinal roundworm was found in the patient's stool. Blah, 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 blah. What is the definitive host of this particular parasite? And nakalimutan mo kung ano yung giant intestinal roundworm. Diba? Diba, Amanda? Kaya kailangan hindi mo kakalimutan yung giant intestinal roundworms. So thank you guys for for remembering these things. Um, especially McKay. At, at least naalala ni McKay pag sinabing cash... SI yon. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng SI? Senior intern. Hoy, hindi. Wala ta kayo, kayo talaga ha? Nakikita ko na si Mark Segi na pinipiloso po ako. Senior intern. Mangihingi ng kasha senior intern. Hindi. SI is small intestine. Okay? And of course, the antipodal of that one is the T, which is the large, the one that inhabits the large intestine. So, okay? Clear ba? Clear? Guys? Can we talk about the parasites one by one? Now, ready na ba kayo? Ay, wala ko naririnig. Game ka na ba? Game na. <laughs> Bakit parang walang enthusiasm? Gusto ko isa pa, sabay-sabay. Gusto ko magising kayo lahat. Kasi may energy ako ngayon kahit may sakit ako. Diyos ko, kayo lahat. Walang energy. Alright, I want everybody to unmute first. Wait lang, unmute muna lahat. Nakakaloka kayo mga bata kayo ha. Unmute mo na lahat. Gusto ko makita. Krisha, bakit hindi ka naka-unmute? Nakakaloka ka, Krisha ha? Wait lang. Titingnan ko dito sa ano. Nasaan na? Ayok kayo. Game ka na ba? Game na. Anong gay na? Nakakaloka talaga kayo. Anong gay na? Ako, nakakaloka talaga kayo. Alright. Anyway, mag-mute na kayo. Naririnig ko yung may tumatahol na aso. Alright. Let's move on to ano. Umalis si ano, umalis si Elisha, sinakal niya ata muna yung aso niya. <laughs> All right. Biglang nawala si ano eh, biglang nawala si Eliza eh. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the participation. Talaga active talaga kayo. Natutuwa ako. All right. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Ascaris lumbricoides. All right. Now, again, kanina sinabi ko nga kanina kay Amanda, what is the the common name for Ascaris lumbricoides? Oh, baka mamaya may nakalimot eh. Baka mamaya may hindi nakikinig. So, aside from Mark Segi, Amanda, Maria, Christina, Krisha, Jeneline, and Nigel, I want somebody else to answer. What is the common name of Ascaris lubricoides? Okay, ayan na si Eliza. Eliza, alam mo, nang gagawin mo? Kailangan mo pakita ka sa akin before you answer. Giant intestinal roundworm. Emphasis on the G. I love it. Giant intestinal roundworm. I love it. Emphasis on the G. Right, very good. Thank you so much. Giant intestinal roundworm, or in the case of in the case of Eliza, how she pronounces it, giant intestinal roundworm. Talagang emphasis on the G. All right. Now, what are the characteristic morphological features of Ascaris lumbricoides? Actually, I don't want you guys to remember this because this is more on the non the exam, not more or not in the board exam because I want you guys to focus on the. Alright, so anyway, oh, sige, baka may itanong ko sa inyo. Eh. Sige, baka may... Kasi diba sabi ni Sir Marco, ako daw gagawa ng exam ninyo. Gusto ko kayong pahirapan. So, maybe, yeah. So, alright. So, alright. Um, characteristic morphological features of Ascaris lumbricoides is that it has longitudinal lines in, through the entire length of the body. So, for example, um, let's imagine... Let's imagine Amanda as a bulate. Alright? So, uh, let's remove her... Uh, let's, remo let's remove her hands and her feet. Uh, let's and let's fuse her feet together. 
Alright? So, pag sinabi kong fuse, pinag, pinagdikit natin yung paa ni Amanda. So, mukha nang bulate si Amanda sa isip nyo. Alright? Okay. So, wala na siyang kamay at saka, wala siyang kamay ha. Wala na siyang kamay. So, natira lang sa kanya yung ulo niya at saka yung paa niya na pinagdikit natin. Alright? Depende kung anong gusto nyo gawin. Duct tape nyo si Amanda or whatever. Alright? Now, she's already looking like a worm. Alright? Na mag, magkuha kayo na, kumuha kayo ng, uh, kumuha kayo ng uh, pentel pen. Sulatan nyo si Amanda from head to the bottom of her feet. Okay? And that is what you call a longitudinal line or a longitudinal line. Alright? So, yun yung, yun yung example. Kasi wala tayong pictures. Bakit gusto ko i-discuss ang, uh, actually, in my discussions in parasitology, mycology, and virology, I don't have pictures. Why? Aside from not, aside from being, aside from being demonetized, okay? Uh, my main concern is, I, I want you guys to use your imaginations, especially in the board exams. In the Philippine board exams, walang pictures, okay? In the Philippine board exams, walang pictures. Sa ASCP, sige, baka meron. Pero in this case, in the case of uh, the Philippine board exams, syempre, before you take the board exams, you have to, uh, before you take ASCP or any type of, uh, or any type of licensure examination outside the country, you have to pass the PRC license examinations, of course. Alright? So, wala mo ng pictures ako dito. Talagang hindi ako nagbibigay ng pictures and I choose to do that. Okay? Um, trilobate lips is also another feature. So, Imagine ninyo yung dalawang labi ni Amanda naging tatlo yung labi niya. So, walang top and bottom lip. We have the bo two bottom lips and one upper lip. Okay? Two bottom lips and one upper lip. So, parang naging clover yung itsura ng labi ni Amanda. Nag-gets nyo? Ayan na, umanga nga na si Amanda class. So, pwede na i-imagine yun na. Ayan. So, ganun, di ba? So, umanga nga si Amanda kanya. Tinakpa ni Amanda yung labi niya. <laughs> okay? Alright? So, clear? It's clear? Hindi imagine ko kasi si... <laughs> ang hirap, no? Ang hirap, Amanda. Tatlo yung labi mo. So, dalawang hati yung upper lip mo. Ay, yung lower lips mo. Tapos, may isa lang na malaking chunk dun sa upper lip mo. So, parang ganon. So, in short, parang mukhang kwet yung labi mo. Ganon. Pag kinlover mo yung... Pag kinlover... Pag naging trilobate ang lips mo. Kaya, kaya ang atin natawag na trilobate lips. Tatlo ang hati. Gets? Gets? What about Eliza? Eliza, do you get it? Alright, I love the spaghetti strap, by the way, Eliza. Thank you so much for entertaining us with skin. I love it. Now, let's move on to the uh, three layers of Ascaris lumbricoides ova. Uh, we have the vitilin layer, the glycogen layer, and the mammillary or the albuminous layer. Alright, so let's start from the innermost layer. The vitilin layer is the innermost layer. The glycogen layer is, of course, the transparent middle layer. And, of course... The mammillary layer is the outer layer. Sometimes, it is absent in the corticated larva. So, you might have noticed that there are certain terminologies. Corticated ova, corticated larva, uh, cortic corticated ova, corticated non-corticated, decorticated ova. It's the same thing. It's still from Ascaris. It just so happens that it's lacking the mammillary layer or the albuminous layer. Alright? Clear? Clear with the layers of the Ascaris lumbricoides ova? So kanina din ay sec ko. Nakita nyo kanina doon sa paint, uh, doon sa may rudimentary paint drawing ko na may layers din ang ano, ba May layers din ang natawa si Mark Segi. <laughs> Kasi parang, ano ba yan, sir? Nakakainis sa tsaka na drawing po. Hindi ko, ay yun na yung kaya ko eh. Kung may, kung may blackboard tayo, din drawing ko talaga siya. Alright? Benefits of F2P. Ah, F2P tuloy. Of face-to-face -face F2P tuloy. Face-to-face -face tuloy pala. F2P means free-to-play na ano tuloy ako. My goodness. Alright? So, pag naglalaro, pag, 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 F2P is, is a term for gamers. So, if you're F2P, you're not paying for the game, but it's free. So, you're still playing it, but not uh, not enjoying the, the the paid version of the game. Anyway, these are the stages. Okay? So, vitilin layer, double L. Huwag kakalimutan. Okay? Glycogen layer and the mammillary layer. Alright? So, the actually, the glycogen layer, if you look at it in the, in the, in the books... Additional information for you guys is that the glycogen layer is actually part of the ova. It's not actually part of the ova, but rather, but rather added to the ova to provide nutrition to the growing, growing, uh, to the growing larva inside. Because there's a larva inside, right? Um, it needs to grow, and the energy source is of course the glycogen layer. All right. Now let's talk about the infective stage of. Ascaris lumbricoides. Let's go back to your review. I know this is a review class and I'm supposed to be the one speaking so much. But this is 
something that you will need to understand from my perspective. Uh, hindi pwedeng hindi nyo alam to. Kasi if you don't know this, especially Ascaris lubricoides, I would rather you go back to third year and study parasitology again. What is the answer to the first bullet? Maria Cristina, kay Sabado. Okay. Embranoid echo. Embranoid. <laughs> ano te? Ulet, ulet, ulet. Embranoid egg. Naloka ako sa embranoid <laughs> <laughs> nagra-rap to. Girl, nagra-rap. Huwag ka mag-rap, te. Kaloka ka, ha? Embryonated egg is correct. And, of course, are there non-embryonated eggs? Alright. What does an embryonated egg look like? And a non-embryonated egg look like? Or an unembryonated leg egg look like? Mark, your Mark. You're, you're, uh, you're sir, nodding yung, your head. Yung embryonated egg, yung corticated, yung decorticated, yung Unembryonated. Sabi niya, yung itsura ni Nigel, pag sure ka dong. Ganun yung itsura ni, ano? Yung itsura ni, ni Nigel, pag sure ka dong. Sure ka? O, ayan din si, ano, o, ayan din si, ayan din si James Paul, pag sure ka dong. Ayan na si James Paul. James Paul, oh. give me, give me your, give me your thoughts. Sir, meron pong larva inside. All right. Very good, very good, very good. There's an embryo inside. There's a clear embryo inside. And when do you usually, where do, what samples do you usually see the embryonated version? Ayan na, wala na ang mga stool. Ayan na, o sige, go. Sige, what samples? James Paul Dow. Soil, soil sample. Soil sample. Talagang, talagang binobonggahan ngayon ni James Paul talaga. Talagang ini-impress ako ni James Paul. Parang gusto kong mag-send ulit ng 100 kay James Paul. Parang gusto ko na lang sustentuhan si James Paul ngayon. Kasi lagi na lang si James Paul ang sumasagot. Nasa na ba ang ibang students? Diyos ko, parang gusto ko na lang pag-aralin si James Paul ng medtech. Kasi hindi sumasagot ang students. Hindi sumasagot ang ibang students. Kayo talaga ha? <laughs> Alright. Okay, now. The infectivity is because of what you call the process of embryonation. All right, which occurs in the soil. All right, it's occur it occurs in the soil. So hindi ka maka hindi maka-infect kung galing yan sa may pupo ni ano. Kung galing lang yan tapos ano, kung galing lang yan sa pupo ni so, as a, as my example earlier, kung galing yan sa pupo ni ni Mark Segi tapos wala namang soil. Wala hindi ka maka-infect yan Nigel ha. All right? Kung naigit yan si ano, kung naigit yan si Mark Segi Nigel tapos naglaro ka doon sa may ano, doon sa may soil, doon sa may may, may, may soil na area, doon ka pwedeng ma-infect kasi it requires embryonation. All right? Okay? All right. Now, what is absent in the decorticated arborist as Chris Lomber egg uh, as Chris recorded egg is the mammillary layer as is correct that is correct also Mark Segi. Thank you for answering that one. Thank you James Paul and Mark Segi. Nasaan ang mga girls? Bakit hindi humahabol ang mga girls? And speaking of girls, where's my main girl? Ano wala ang main girl ko? Tahimik ang main girl ko. Nandiyan ba siya? Or absent na naman? Wala siya. My god. Yung isa, yung isa kong anak Wala din yung isa kong anak, Alexis. Ayan, nandiyan pala si Alexis. Alexis, where are you? My gosh, Alexis. I missed you, anak. Alright, now. In the life cycle of Ascaris lumbricoides, the ova hatches on what part of the human body? Re review ulit tayo. Review, review, review. It hatches on what part of the human body? The large intestine, the, the stomach, or the, or the small intestine? Oh, yan na may choices na kayo. Sinong pwedeng sumagot? Small intestine according to Eliza. Let's see if it's correct. This event results to the larval migration to what organs? Of course, it will go to the intestinal wall, blood vessels, liver, lungs, alveoli, and then bronchioles, pharynx, and then the small intestine again where they mature into adults. Okay? So, where is she correct? Is she correct? Her answer is actually correct. It is in the small intestines. Okay? Small intestine. Alright? Kaya huwag nyo kakalimutan si cash. Diba? Huwag nyo kakalimutan yung cash, te. Alright? Kasi yun yung pinaka-high yield sa lahat ng high yield na ibibigay ko sa inyo. Cash, te. Alright? Huwag SI. Uh, senior intern. Manghingi ng, manghingi ng cash sa senior intern. Nakakaloka talaga kayo. Alright? Nakikita ko na ngayon. Ngayon pala nakikita ko na pinipiloso po ako ni Mark Segi. Kaya inuunahan ko na. 
<laughs> All right. Now, let's move on to conditions associated with um with Ascaris lumbricoides. Um um infections with unembryonated pre- uh, unembryonated ova present in the stool of patients. So for example, there is no ascariasis infection. The patient just obtained it from some uh, from some unknown reason. We don't know where. Maybe maybe trip lang yung kumain ng ebak, di ba? Hindi ko alam, di ba? So pwede ba yon? Yes. You can get it. You can you can get this one. Another thing, another reason would probably be there would probably be because he has been infected with ascariasis, okay? And the last thing is uh, is an all male infection. All right? An all male infection. So the ibig sabihin hindi nag hindi nag mature ang organisms. Na stress na, nandun lang siya, unembryonated lang ang ova present sa stool. So usually it's a combination of embryonated ova, unembryonated ova and unembryonated ova. Okay? So usually ganun ang infections ni talagang ascariasis. Okay? So in the case of in cases of where patients have obtain, uh, um, have majority uh, majority of the time they would have uh, they would have unembryonated ova in the stool, these are the probable causes. Wala talaga siyang ascariasis infection, nakain lang niya, may nakain lang siya na mayroong contaminated ng pupo, na tsaka may ova and it just so happens we have to we happen to catch it in the microscope. Or the patient has early ascariasis, or there's an all male infection of ascariasis. Okay, so unembryonated ova usually will be present majority of the time. Now, larval, larval, larval to lai. Nahawa ako kay, nahawa ako kay ano? Sorry, nahawa ako kay Maki. Sorry Maki. Larval migration to the lungs dapat yan. Bata pa ako nung ginawa ko to kaya hindi ko alam yung mga prepositions ko. Larval migration to the lungs of Ascaris lumbricoides is characterized by what? Characterized by eosinophilia, cough, urticaria, rash, and edema of the lips. Talaga, sir? May mga ganun palang nangyayari? Yes. The condition is known as Loeffler syndrome and Ascaris pneumonitis. Not to be confused with Loeffler serum slant, ha? Baka pinaghahalo-halo nyo na yung mga names ng mga, ng mga, ano, ng mga scientists, ha? Huwag niyong paghalu-haluin. Loeffler's theorem slant sa bacteriology on staph or staph species differentiation. Okay? Huwag kakalimutan. Alright? In this case, Loeffler's syndrome tayo. Okay? Loeffler's syndrome. Ascaris pneumonitis and lo- or Loeffler's syndrome. Alright? So, ito yung mga signs and symptoms. I rarely, uh, I rarely ask this in the exams. But, of course, the most notable is eosinophilia, cough, and urticaria. Alright? rash it could be a vague it could be a vague symptomology as well as edema of the lips right you could get you could get a tissue parasite you could get a t- tissue parasite that causes um that causes edema of the lips so i don't want you guys to confuse certain things with other parasites all right now let's move on to ectopic larval migration so ectopic totoo sir akala ko ba akala ko babae lang ang nagkakaroon ng ectopic pregnancies Meron din pala mga ectopic ter- terminology sa parasitology. Yes, ectopic larval migration may form may form a granuloma reaction. So if so for example, so for example, the larva migrates to the lungs, right? They would form a granuloma. What is a granuloma? We discussed this last week when we when we talked about the mycobacterium species, right? When we talked about mycobacterium species, Ano nangyayari? Parang yung ano, um, description ko last time is I, I, I showed you guys a picture of an infected uh, an infected um, lung biopsy and you would see a you would see a lot uh, 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 a part of the organ or a part of the tissue encapsulated by a lot of uh, by a lot of WBCs. Naalala nyo ba yon? Yung napapalibutan siya ng ano, napapalibutan yung infected tissue. Diba? Ganon ang nangyayari. Kasi nagkakaroon ng granuloma formation. So what is a granuloma? Let me give you guys a brief description. Granuloma is yung hindi mapatay ng immune system mo. Ang ginagawa ng immune system na lang, i-cover na lang natin yan, bahala ka dyan. Ganon. Ganon ang ginagawa ng ano. Tantadin na lang natin ng ano, ng, ng, ng WBC. So usually when you look at it histologically, ay, may granuloma ka agad. Pag sinabing, ay, may granuloma, kasi na-encapsulate siya ng WBC. So, yun yung nangyayari doon sa mga larva. For example, nagpunta sa larva ni... Uh, sino ba yung example ko kanina ng mga nagkainan ng pupo? Si Nigel pala ko example, yung infected patient natin, di ba? For example, talaga nakakuha siya ng... Nakakuha talaga siya ng embryonated version nung, 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 nung eggs. And then, and then it 
undergoes maturity inside her body. In the in the process, in the process, some of the larva got stuck in her in her lungs and it formed a granuloma. So anong mangyayari kapag ka nagkaroon ng granuloma sa lungs? Ano ang clinical presentation ng pasyente natin sa case presentation nyo? Sige nga. Anong clinical presentation ng pasyente kapag ka ano? Kapag ka merong granuloma sa lungs? Hala. Ano na? Wala na silang idea. Pag ka nagkaroon ng visceral larval migrants or ecto eh, sorry not visceral ectorpal larval migration ng Ascaris lumbricoides, what happens is it may sometimes get misdiagnosed as what? Sa radiologic studies kasi makikita na may granuloma formation, 'di ba? So pag tiningnan sa X-ray, ay parang may TB to, 'di ba? Ganon. Diba? So for example, ganito na kayo ngayon. Class, bibigyan ko na kayo ng example ng parang parang ano, bigyan ko na kayo ng patikim kung paano ako magbigay ng questions. Case presentation. Patient patient was uh, was uh, was admitted to the uh, in uh, the inpatient department of the male ward with the following with the following with the following initial assessments. Um hemoptysis Patay tayo dyan. Sir, gumagamit ka din ng mga ano? Gumagamit ka din ng medical terminologies? Yes, gumagamit ako ng medical terminologies. Hindi ko sasabihin, coughing of blood. Anong kaguluhan yan? Lagay ko, hemoptysis. ba? Diba? She's coughing up blood, hemoptysis or hemoptysis with eosinophil with, characteri with uh, characterized eosinophilia, rashes, and rashes and... Urticaria. Difficulty of breathing has been also characterized characterized in the patient as she was being as she was being transported to the X-ray to the radiological department. And upon X-ray as uh, and upon X-ray upon X-ray uh, uh, imaging uh, X-ray imaging shows that there is a form of granuloma formation in the middle lower part of the lungs. Oh, yan na patikim ni Sir Manuel. Which of the following organisms may be associated to this case? Magbibigay ako ng mga hindi nagtatravel. Magbibigay ako syempre ng mga choices ko. Hindi nagtatravel sa lungs. Hindi naglalarva. Hindi nag Ang mga example ko is pl uh, Plasmodium falciparum, Entamoeba coli, mga ganun ang mga examples ko. So ngayon, kayo ang mamimili. ba? Diba? Or medyo guguluhin ko ang buhay ninyo. Larva na adult worms. ba? Diba? Adult worms of Ascaris. Rabditiform larva. Filariform larva, ganon ang ginagawa ko, okay? So think, so think before you answer, cause maybe gusto lang kayong etos ni Sir Manuel, di ba? So ganon, ganon ako magbigay ng example. I never give common terminologies if, if I if I can do it. Pag hindi ko alam yung terminologies, well, tinin yon. Pero may maki, makikita nyo, meron pa ako mga question na may mga myopia ang patient. Ganon, para sa itology Naging far sight, naging near sight nagka Nagkaroon ng visual impairment Ang pasyente, ganon Hindi ko lalagay visual impairment, ilalagay ko myopia Ganon, okay So kailangan familiar din kayo Because in the exams, ganon din ang Terminologies na ginagamit ng mga examiners natin So for example, wala talaga kayong Wala kayong good foundations You will not be able to answer my, answer my case presentation And ang case presentation ko Ang dami pang follow up question Related to question number one Which of the following samples will be the most Will be the most ideal In this particular case Biopsy, stool sample, blood sample, peripheral blood, uh, blood sample collected from EDTA, blood sample collected from heparin, lithium heparin. Mga ganon. May follow-up question pa yon. Which of the following would be blah, blah, blah. So, pag nagkamali ka sa isang, exam, sa isang answer, sa definitive diagnosis ng patient, mali na lahat. Kasi mali mo, sinagot mo, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium falciparum ang sinagot mo. Tapos lahat ng question na ano mo, related sa plasmodium falciparum, patay tayo dyan, sir, how long na select ko plasmodium falciparum, peripheral blood ang naisagot ko. ba diba? na gets nyo? So, three points lang nawala sa inyo. I want, the reason why I'm giving case presentations is because I want you guys to appreciate every point in your exams. Every point counts. Hindi basta-basta yung, eh, naka-amass naman ako ng, 40, ng, 45 per, ng 45 answers na correct. Hindi mo pala alam nun yung isa para sa question mo, inagkamali ka. Tapos mali na yung tatlo. Sa sumunod, di ba? Ganon. Ganon magbigay si Sir Manuel. Di ba? Now, let's move on to Toxocara species. Now, kapamilya niya si Ascaris lombricoides, pero hindi sila magkaparehas ng pangalan. Of course, we have Toxocara cati and Toxocara canis. Alright. Now, let's talk about the 
let's talk about the disease associated with Toxocara species. Um, visceral larval migrants is also known as Toxocariasis. All right, so Toxocariasis or Toxocariasis in the Philippines. When I was in, when I was studying, when I was studying there in the Philippines, they would call it Toxocara Toxocariasis. Not to be confused with Toxoplasmosis, guys. Ha? It's different. Toxocariasis. Pag mga narinig kayo na word na cariasis, yan, bulate ang infection. Okay? Pag sinabi naman nating toxoplasmosis, alright, ibig sabihin nun, plasmo, uh, uh, ibig sabihin nun, protozoan yung infection mo. Kaya meron tayong, uh, meron tayong cryptosporiasis, di ba, yung mga ganon. Alright? So, please be mindful, it is visceral larval migrants. So, for example, uh, excuse me, let me cough for a Alright, now, there are two species that I mentioned earlier for when it comes to toxocariasis, okay? So, it's dog ascaris or cat ascaris, toxocara canis, toxocara cati, alright? Definitive host of the following is, as I mentioned before, dogs and cats, depending on, depending on the species. So, for example, if the organism comes from a dog, it's dog ascaris, it's toxocara, toxocara canis. If it's from a cat, it's toxocara cati, alright? Clear? Clear, clear, clear? All right. Now let's move on to the human infections. Human infection and Toxocara species result to what type of life cycle? A dead end life cycle. A dead end. Bakit dead end? Because you actually get infected by visceral larval migrants via skin penetration. Hindi yung pagkain ng pupu ng po ng aso at pusa. Ha? Kaya nga, di ba? Yes, Alma. Yes, that is correct, Alma. Right. Okay. Now. <clears throat> the triad of manifestations, uh, the triad of clinical manifestation in toxocariasis is the following. Eosinophilia, hepatomegaly, and hyperglobulinemia. Alright? So, bakit, bakit dead end cycle kasi siya? Kasi, hindi magtutuloy to adult stages. Alright? Kasi hindi tayo ang definitive host. Hindi humans ang definitive host. Alright? So, that's the reason why I want you guys to remember. You are the... If, if you get the if you get to uh, sometimes they would play around with the definitions. Which of the following renders uh, which of the following infections would be characterized as a dead end life cycle in human infections? Yung mga ganun yung mga questions sa mga examiners sometimes. All right, so sometimes they would play around with the words and just to see just to see if you have actually an understanding of what is actually being uh, what is being uh, what is actually being asked of you or what is being examined from you. All right, now. Triad of clinical manifestations. He, ganun lang. Yun lang yung tatandaan mo, ano, Amanda. He, ganun. He, he, ganun. So, bakit? Ano yung, ano yan? Hepatomegaly, iosinophilia, and hyperglobulinemia. Okay? The diagnosis of, the diagnosis of toxocariasis is done by, <coughs> by what? Sige, tingnan natin kung merong gumagamit ng kanilang, ano, may gumagamit ng kanilang brains today. How is toxocariasis diagnosed? Ooh. Sir, pero din pala tayong diagnosis. Kanino tayo kukuha ng sample? The, the diagnosis of toxocariasis is done by what? Ala, patay ta Jenny Lynn. Ay, inunahan ka na ni ano. Never mind Jenny Lynn. Somebody already answered the question for you. It's actually direct fecal smears of Cat and dog feces. Yuck, sir! Kadiri! <laughs> Yuck, sir! Ginagawa ba, ginagawa ba siya all the time? No, actually, it is done only in cases where the diagnosis is unavoidable. Uh, is, uh, they're doing, uh, what they call this, if you're watching House M, if you, if you guys happen to watch, uh, happen to, happen to watch House MD in the past, um, sometimes they would, what, they would do what you call a differential diagnosis. So sometimes they would just want to rule out uh, certain uh, certain uh, certain um, disease correlations or uh, based on the symptomology they just want to rule out certain diseases. So kaya natin ginagawa. Kaya nagre-request minsan ang doktor ng cat or dog fecalysis or pet fecalysis. Actually uh, the only hospital that I've known I, no, no, no. The only laboratory that I've known to do this is the Research Institute of Tropical Medicine. I think they are the only one who actually requests for pet ana pet fecal analysis. I'm not I'm not sure if that is uh, I'm not sure if that is true for the other hospitals. But the only hospital that I've seen in the Philippines would go at length 
to diagnose toxocariasis by doing DFS on a patient's on a patient's pet is uh, RITM. Because I I think they're also collecting data. Kaya, kaya it's important for it's important to diagnose toxocariasis. All right, now let's talk about another parasite, Enterobius vermicularis. All right, so Enterobius vermicularis is also another parasite that's important for us. Another name for Enterobius vermicularis. There are other there are three other names for Enterobius vermicularis. Please give it to me quickly, Nigel. Sir Pinworm. Okay. Ano pa? Um, there's no idea po. Dun sa iba. James Paul. Ayan talaga si James Paul. James Paul. Bida ang sarap. Pinworm po. Society right. worm. Chop. Seed worm. Alright. Very good. So he got it all correct. Talagang, talagang parang gusto ko na talagang pag-aralin si, ano, si James Paul. Parang gusto ko pag-aralin ng isang semester si James Paul. Kasi si James Paul lang ang sumasagot, guys. Alright, so ganon. Pin worm, seat worm, society, or society, social worm. Alright, now, let's talk about the morphological characteristics of entero, ad, an adult entero, Enterobius vermicularis worm. There are what you call, uh, they, they, we have what you call the lateral wings or the cephalic alley. Alright, in a lot of the exams that I've noticed, even in the ASCP, again, put a star on this one. Alright, please put a star on this one. Because this is important. Cephalic alley was asked in an exam question. And actually, if you look at the BOC, uh, the BOC uh, bo books that you might encounter when you're studying for your ASCPs, which of the uh, cephalic alley is a feature known in the uh, known for known in what species of nematode or what family of nematode? Enterobius, Ascaris, Shongyloides strecoralis, or Necator americanus. So, ganun yung, ano, ganun yung question sila. So, cephalic alley is a feature commonly seen in which of the, in the adult worms of the, which of the following parasites. Ganun yung, ganun sila mag-question. Okay? So, I want you to put a star on this because I know, I've seen this in the board of certification or the BOC when you are taking the board exam for the, for, for, uh, when you're taking the, when you're taking the um, ACP examinations, you might be asked this question because I, I saw it in their test bank. Okay? Now, um, another thing that you need to remember is the esophageal bulb. It's not bulb, okay? So please change, uh, guys, please change it because you know I was young when I was making this exam. It's supposed, uh, this, these flashcards. It's supposed to be um, esophageal bulb. Let me change it. Let me change it. Can I change it here? Oh, no, no, I can't change it because I'm doing a slideshow. So esophageal bulb. All right, so may esophageal bulb din pala sila, sir. All right, now let's talk about the habitat of adult pinworms. Habitat of adult pinworms. Oh, sige, Maria Cristina Sabado. Habitat of pinworms. Kasi sila sagot mo kanina yung kashte eh. Ano yun? Ano yung ano? ano? Saan ang habitat ng pinworms? Small, Small or large? Small intestine po. Small intestine? Ay, cash. Oh. Diba? Ayan na nga ba? Ay, nakalimutan yun. Naka Ay, naku, nakakaloka ka talaga, Christine, ha? Ano to? Anong L-I? Sir? Leadership intern. Leader intern. <laughs> Kayo talaga. Si kum colon large intestine. Very good. Oh. Di ba? Kompleto si Maria or Quisa. Now, let's move on to characteristic morphological features of the pinworm. In the Philippines, you will be asked this question. Um, characteristic morphological structure or morpholo morphological characteristics or the pathognomonic morphological features of pinworms. Ano? Anong itsura? Kailangan alam yung exact words kasi yan yung ginagamit sa exam. Sabi ni Mark Segi, ventral side flattened D. Alam mo kung saan mo nakuha yan. Alam ko kung saan mo nakuha yan. Sa Google. Sa Google mo nakuha yan. Nako, D-shaped. Okay. In your exams, specifically Apollon, ito yung parang tinatawag nating medtech leakage. Okay? They have questions and the answer to that question is actually lopsided D. Hindi basta D-shaped lang. Okay? Huli ka na, Jeneline Marzan. I'm terribly sorry, Jeneline. Alright? Okay. So, lopsided D ang dapat yung tatada. Kasi sa board exam natin, walang pictures. 
Kaya alam ko alam ninyo 'yan kapag ka nakita niyo na sa exam niyo 'yan sa ano. But because you guys are still your, are still at your undergraduate years, I'm not going to ask you pictures, okay? Because my main focus for you guys is to pass your parasitology exams. Bak- kasi bakit? Bakit sir? Kasi may te- kasi parang 20 questions ang itatanong sa inyo niyan sa exam niyo. Out of 120 questions ata or 15, I'm not sure. Please uh, please confirm with your uh, with your with your professor because I haven't been in the Philippines for quite some time now but in our case it was uh, it was 10 to tw- 10 to 15 uh, 15 to 20 questions in our exam eh kung nagkamali ka sayang napakadali ng mga questions sa parasitology guys kaya nga binigyan ko kayo ng isang papel yun, isang isang notes na yon yun ang reviewin ninyo sigurado lahat ng questions sa parasitology masasagot nyo na pag hindi nyo na fill out yung force bahala kayo sa buhay nyo Charig. <laughs> Charig. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Nandiyan pa naman yung video. Nababa, nadidelete lang yan every year kapag ka may bago akong lectures. Alright. Now, because, enterovicular, vermic, uh, because enterobius vermicularis can cause reinfection on the same host, it is considered as what? Parasite. Ayan na. Patay tayo dyan. They are known as an auto-infective parasite. And what type of reinfection? External reinfection or the external auto infection. So please ter- please don't forget these terminologies that I'm using. Basically, ano ba ang ginagawa ng isang pasyente na merong pinworm infection? In Tagalog na lang, Amanda. Anong ginagawa? Sige si James Paul na ulit. Dito kay James Paul, bida ang sarap. Alright, James Paul. Kamot. Nagkakamot. Kamot po. Very good. Very good. Eh, Siyempre, usually bata iyan. Hindi naman alam ng bata na madumi yung puwet niya. ba diba? Kakamutin niya yung arsehole niya. ba diba? Hindi ko sinabi yung a-hole. Kasi bakit hindi ko sinabi Mark? Kasi baka ma-demotetize tayo. So sinabi ko in German na lang. Yung arsehole niya. I- kinamot niya. ba diba? So, ano mangyayari sa bata? Makulit ang bata, mag- maglakad-lakad sa may ano, may oven na pala yung fingertips niya, di ba? Tapos, ang bata, anong other, gina- anong other na ginagawa ng bata? Isusubo. Di ba? So, ay no, kadiri. Pero sa bata, wala namang alam ang bata sa infection control practices, di ba? So, ganon ang nangyayari. Kaya, meron tayong tinatawag na inter- external auto-infection. Okay? Bakit? Bakit ba kasi tayo nagka... Bakit sa exter- bakit external auto-infection, hindi internal? Bakit? Saan ba naglilay ng ova ang, ang adult worms? Saan siya naglilay ng ova? Where the... Where, ayan na ulit. Kakatahon ulit. Before ka magsagot, dito kay James Paul, bida ang sarap. Talagang meron lagi before siya sumagot. Very anal area po. Very anal area. Yes, he is correct. Talagang alam na alam talaga ni James Paul ang ano ang parasitology talagang gamay na gamay niya talaga parang gusto ko na siya talaga bigyan ng 500 talaga mamaya ka talaga pamaya na natin pag-decide on James Paul ha cause you're the only one answering the questions and you're very participative and I appreciate it Mark Segi and ano Mark Segi McKay and parang walang energy ngayon si Nigel, Nigel. hindi siya nag-raise ng hand ngayon parang girl are you okay? may pinagdadaanan ka ba? carry ka pa ba? naunsa ka diha dahi? <laughs> Napabisaya ako kahit hindi ako bisaya dai. 'Di ba? Naigit, naigit ka dai. Hindi <laughs> sir. All right. Anyway, whatever you are, whatever you are, whatever you are feeling right now, these lectures are these lectures are here to edutain you. So, a combination of entertainment and uh, so hopefully when you get to rewatch this, you get to relive some of the funny moments that we have in these lectures. Okay? So, next Let's talk about the disease associated with Enterobius vermicularis. So there, there there's several terminologies, or actually two terminologies, okay? Oxyuriasis or enterobiasis. Okay? So if it's oxyuriasis, it actually is known as an oxyrid worm. The scientific nerve or the scientific family or the scientific name for the family that uh that Be, that is the that that belong or that class that is the classification of enterobius vermicularis is actually an oxyrid nematode okay but because it's the only one associated with human infections the correct terminology actually is supposed to be enterobiasis okay enterobiasis not oxycariasis 
because there are there is uh there is what you call cat pin worms okay and they're not associated with hum human infections so we go directly to which pc infects us okay so that's the main that's the main uh gist about that one now the common signs and symptoms of um pinworm infections basically you are you are going to have nocturnal perianal rubbing or perianal scratching pruritus ani all right it is a latin term used to uh, basically you have an itchy arsehole okay so basically i use the german terminology again so hindi tayo ma demonetize mark segi no diba all right and loss of appetite all right so i'm using the german terminology so hindi ako pwede hindi pwede ooh <laughs> diba ganun all right kasi malapit na ma-monetize mamonet si sir manuelio diba all right so i will be making a lot of videos about uh, about paras about medtech medtech in uh, about medical technology if you're interested next time all right so ov position of female worms or when, when you call ov position what do i mean by ov position except for james paul anybody in the class knows what is the definition of ov position aba wala except kay james paul hindi pwede hindi ka muna pwede magsagot ngayon james paul aba wala sige magbigay tayo ng reward 100 for 100 gcash ayan Oh, biglang gumawa na biglang nag-search. Ano po, sir? Expulsion ng egg po dun sa Ovidoc. Sa may... Yun. Ay, taray talaga ni Amanda. Pag kami kinalaman sa pera, talaga Amanda, no? Mag-re-raise ka ng kamay mo. I love it. All right. Very good. That is actually correct. OV position is basically the deposition of eggs from the Ovidoc of the adult females. Actually, incomplete yung data niya, pero I still accepted it. That's fine. So 100, 100 to you. All right. So please send your um next. Ano to, ha? Next, next, next week or ah uh, no 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 um after our virology lecture because I gave I gave the I gave the two weeks off to my to my secretary. All right. So um uh, this is my email. Please email me later your number indicating that you are actually Amanda if you're using a different name. If you're not, if you didn't indicate I would not send you money, girl. I didn't know you. I don't know you. You have to introduce yourself, girl. Introduce yourself. All right. Now, let's go on to the uh, to the answer to this question. OV position of females occur in the perianal region, as James Paul said. Now, um, uh, let's go to the migration and OV position of pinworms in the female genitalia. So basically, it will cause three things. This may result to vaginitis, urethritis, and salvingitis. So, sir, tinag talaga, sir, pwede din sila mag ov position sa... Yes, of course. Okay? Lalo na kapag ka ang bata ay nagkakamot din sa pechay. Alright? So pag ang bata nagkakamot din sa pechay niya, most probably, magkakaroon din ng infection yung bata. Kasi nga, mag... mag ma, uh, Ma mga ngati doon, syempre pupunta yung adult worms doon and the distance between the anus and of course the labia minora and major uh, the vagina is relatively like a couple of cent a couple of millimeters away from each other, right? So it is the it is it is important that in some of the kid, uh, in some of the uh, in some of your case studies you might encounter rare cases like these. But most probably, most probably class this is more or less Pamet quiz show questions. Okay? So, bakit tinagdag mo dyan, sir? Siyempre, baka mamaya meron tayong representative from this class, di ba? Na ipapadala na si MCC sa, ka, sa, sa Pamet. Wala. Wala. I nominate James Paul. <laughs> Pag nanalo si James Paul, bibigyan ko na full scholarship for one year. Di ba? Pag nanalo, for one year. I nominate James Paul. Kasi para si J. Pero pero baka mabaya si Mr. na sagot ko na ba lahat ng ano walang consolation pa. Talaga kayo ha. Wag ganoon. <laughs> Wag ganoon. All right now. What is the most common diagnostic test for Enterobius verbicularis? All right, for the win, James Paul. James Paul na ba na nauna eh? Scotch tape method po. Very good. Talagang alam na alam talaga master na master talaga ni ano ni James Paul ang ang, ang parasitology. Ay, talaga sir. Four times para. Ay. Wag na wag na wag ano naririnig ka sa YouTube. Pero of course, thank you so much for thank you so much for sharing that part of your life with us. You know why? Because your mistakes make you stronger. ba? Sabi nga ni Cristina Aguilera, what doesn't make you strong, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. Cristina Aguilera ba 'yon? 
Ay, hindi pala. Kelly Clarkson pala yun. Alright. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> oh, talagang kinorek ako. Sino yung nag-correct sa akin? Kinorek ko naman yung sarili ko, ha? Sino yung nag-correct sa akin? Hihingan ko ng 100... Hihingan ko siya ng 100 Gcash. <laughs> Alright. Okay, now, to make sure... <clears throat> Sorry. So you guys you get you guys um uh no scotch tape swab test of course but if you want to be if you want to be technical the correct terminal the complete terminology is Graham scotch tape technique okay it's repeated seven times okay seven consecutive days rather it's not seven times hindi seven times na ano sa isang upuan doon sa ano umupo si patient doon in the same day seven times mo kinolekt hindi ganoon Okay, seven days consecutive. Seven consecutive days. Pag sinabing seven times, um, I want to be. I want you guys to be sure. I want you guys to be. I want it to be clear for you guys that it's seven consecutive days. All right. All right. Now, uh, mode of transmission of um, mode of transmission of pinworms. Actually, there are two. Uh, who knows the mode of transmission of pinworms? Anybody can enlighten the class. Mark Segi. Two. Okay, I In, need two. Ingestion po, tsaka yung auto-infection. Invent, in, eh? Really? That's already ingesting it. Ingesting the embryonated eggs. Actually, it's inhalation. Alright? Totoo, sir. Totoo ba? Yes, if you look, at it in the, you look at it in the books, the reason why it's called society worm is because people who are oftentimes living with, uh, people who are living with patients infected with infected with enterobius vermicularis will also test positive with the scotch tape twist with the scotch tape swab test bakit kasi in the dust the embryonated ova will be what will be floating around especially yung kumot syempre ik- syempre yung bata pagka nangati sa gabi ikakamot uh, ikakamot sa may ano niya sa arsehole niya and then ipupunas siya doon sa may gilid syempre medyo basa-basa lalo na yung mga bata makukulit di ba sa beddings yes talaga si James Paul alam na alam talaga ang mga nangyayari kapag ano so pwede na siya maging ano diagnostician talaga in terms of parasitology hindi natin alam James Paul sa bacteriology pa eh okay we will see i will look at i will look at the, i will ask sir marco specifically for your ex- for your exam answers, okay? I want to see kung talagang deserving ka ng full scholarship pag nakapasa ka ng ano, pag naka, ano, ano pa nag doon? Pag naka, pag naka, pag naka first place kay sa Pamit Quiz Show kasi ninominate kita. Sorry. Alright, now, another name for trichuri is trichiura. Anybody here? Alright, somebody said, somebody raised your hand. Um, Makay, ikaw na lang lagi ginawa na sumasagot so every time na lang na, ano, may other name ikaw tatanungin ko, okay? So, Makay. Okay. Whipworm. Talaga, without, without, ano pa, without enthusiasm. Whipworm. Alam na namin yan, sir. Right? So, kaya parang pinapasadahan ko na lang, di ba? Alright. So, the habitat of whip, whipworm, kashte. Sino makakasagot? Maria na naman. Ulit. Sige, okay, go. Makay. Large intestine po. Alright. Wala pa rin, wala pa rin, ano, wala pa rin, wala pa rin enthusiasm. Large intestine, sir. Alam na namin yan. We don't really care. We don't give an F. Ganon. Alright, so next. What are the terms used for the disease associated, co- associated uh, for the disease caused by the uh, whipworm? So we have trichoriasis and trichocephaliasis. Okay? Trichoriasis or trichocephaliasis. Alright? Ito yung tinatawag na attendated ends. Kaya may tinatawag tayo na trichocephaliasis because it's the cephalic portion that is actually um, attached to the, the cecum, uh, say, uh, large intestine or your or your um, or <coughs> or any part of the colon okay now describe the morphology of the adult worm in tagalog sino pwedeng mag mag-disca- describe sa akin in tagalog na lang kasi kapag ka in english pa natin mahirapan kayo coconut cake rectum oh my <laughs> Si Sino yan? Ay, si ano pala yan? <laughs> si, si Marco Flores talaga. Yung kaklase niyo si Marco Flores talaga. <laughs> Naloka. Hindi <laughs> pa yan. That's, that's, that's what the condition is called. I mean, Totoo ba? In, in Wait, let me google for a while. Give me a couple of seconds. Hmm. In layman's term, that's, that's what it's called. <laughs> Ayaw ka, ah, no? Alright, sige. Okay. <laughs> Oh, it's 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 uh, like it's 
It's relatively useless fact. Na nice to know lang. Ganun. Oh, oh <laughs> relatively useless fact. <laughs> yeah. Rectal prolapse, yeah. Okay. So, describe the morphology. Morphology, I'm going to Pero thank you so much, Sir Marco, for sharing that. Uh, as you say, a relatively useless fact. But at least you guys know, di ba? Alright, now, um, the morphology. Sige. In Tagalog na. Di pa naman tayo mag-IELTS. Sige na. In Tagalog. describe sa akin. Sige nga, Eliza. Sabi nga ni ano, sabi nga ni, ano si, binag, binagtaas, binagtaas ng kamay, sino yung nagtaas ng kamay, hindi ko narinig, hindi ko nakita. Hindi ko nakita ulit. <laughs> Ay, si James Paul ulit pala. <laughs> Alright, James Paul, describe what trichuris trichura look like. The adult verbs. Ano? Blah, blah, blah. Latigo. Latigo, alright. So, ano ba yung tura ng latigo? Mataba yung, mataba yung hawakan, tapos, mapayat yung Dulo, di ba? Okay. Alright. So, slender anterior and a robust posterior. Yun yung, yun yung kaya ang arte, di ba? Kaya tinatawag na whip worm or whip-like morphology. Okay? So, a slender anterior and a robust posterior. Alright. Now, let's talk about, uh, let's differentiate the posterior ends of adult whip worms. Actually, you can look at the, you can look at the, uh, you can look at, uh, I think this is common, I think in any book that you look at, uh, they differentiate the males and from the females, but in whipworms, it's important for you guys to note it because it has a characteristic terminal. We use a characteristic ter terminology for females. It has a straight, straight posterior end. For males, it act it is actually coiled 360 degrees. Okay, it's coiled 360 degrees. So if you see it in adult worms, just leave it. Uh, if it's still alive, leave it. Uh, uh, for example, in your labor in the laboratory, if it's if it was delivered from the OR, delivered from the OR, transported from the OR, kasi pag di pag di ko delivered, parang ano parang naganak eh. Uh, <laughs> gawin na, let's use the term. It was if it was transported from directly from the OR, and they want you and they want the laboratory to identify it immediately. Because some there are some cases that, that these things happen. Uh, makikita kasi sa ano? Makikita kasi sa sa ultrasound ng patient akala mim ay sa ano sa yes yeah, sa ultrasound muna makikita na parang may growth kagano si doktor and then makikita sa colonoscopy niya ay infected pala siya ng whip or infected pala siya ng bulate so kukuha ng isang specimen ang isang ano ang, ang isang endoscopist and they will send it directly to the laboratory okay for immediate identification so what you were what you're going to do um, this is not included in many of the books that you're going to read it's actually just a practice in clinical laboratory just drop it just drop it in the just drop it in the in a flat surface and if it's a straight if it's a female it will form a straight line okay if it's a male it will coil all right all right ganun lang yung ano ganun lang siya ka simple now let's talk about the ova of whipworms ang daming terminology sige class ano mga terminology when we're looking when we're looking at the uh, morphology of whipworm ova or trichuris trichura ova. Lemon shape, okay. Another one. Japanese shape. Ay, Japanese lantern. Alright. Ano pa? Sige. Ang daming terminologies. Barrel shape. Talagang bongga-bongga si ano, oh. Si Maria, Maria, Ma Mary or Quiza. Okay, football shape, according to James Paul. But what's missing? What's missing? There's some. There's something important that there, that's missing. There's something important. There's a lot of stuff. Bipolar mucus plugs. Very good. All right. The most important one is the, the most important. You could say a lot of these things: football shape, barrel shape, lemon shape, Japanese lantern shape. But what is missing is bipolar mucus plugs. The most important thing that you need to know. Okay? Because Capillaria philippinensis doesn't have one. They both, they both, they're obviously they're mostly characterized by the, the same thing. Sometimes they would be considered as peanut shape. But the most the important difference is that there's a large bipolar mucus plug. Okay? Okay? Clear? Now. Let's look at let's look at the uh, ingested embryonated ova of embryonated ova of the uh, a little bit more of the ova of the whipworm. Okay, an ingested embryonated whipworm ova releases an activated larva at at what part of the GIT? At what part of the GIT? Oh, na naman tayo. Hindi mo pa gamitin yung teh dito yung cash teh. Kasi bakit? Saan ba siya? Specifically. Lumalabas ang larva. Sa small intestine ba? Sa large intestine? Or dun sa dulo? Kaya nagkakaroon ka ng, ano, ng coconut cake rectum. 
ठीक है Actually sir, di ba yan yung tinatawag na pan, ano yun? Uh, Ensaimada, Ensaimada uh, in Tagalog. Parang nung studyante ako, we call it Ensaimada, uh, Ensaimada, di ba? Or intestinal Ensaimada. Ganon. Talaga ba? Kung ano cake yung kasi sa may, sa. <laughs> Kasi may ano, kasi mayroong cheese. Tapos ganon yung itsure. May, may, may budbud ng ano, desiccated coconut. O, oh, pwede ni Garo. <laughs> Yikes! All right, parang macaroons. All right, so saan? So ang larva lalabas sa small intestine, of course, di ba? Class, don't forget ang larva lalabas sa sa small intestine from the ova. Pero si larva pupunta sa small intestine, dun siya magiging adult worm, specifically sa sikum. All right, sa sikum siya pupunta. Okay, so yan yung tigatao. Yan yung basically ah, uh, yung basic life cycle ni Uh, Trichuris trichura. Okay, now, heavy whipworm infection causes uh, recognizable clinical picture. What are the signs and symptoms? Of course, you're going to see blood streaked stool. Kasi nga, di ba, nag-attach yung anterior, uh, anterior end ni, uh, ni whipworm. And this requires a bit of, a bit of attachment. Sometimes, it's a, a, sometimes it would cause, it would cause, uh, heavy infections would cause, uh, would cause bleeding. In the large intestine, and it can cause vomiting also. So even and I think any type of parasitic infection would just cause would cause vomiting because you have a lot of you have a lot of friends inside you, right? You're accommodating a lot of organisms inside you, and of course the natural reaction of the human body is of course vomiting. Specifically, lalo na nasa may ano siya, nasa 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 lower ba, nasa may back end natin siya, and in our back end, in our back door. A specific nerve that is responsible for our for our gag re reflex is actually the vagus nerve, de ba? So, isa yan sa mga reactions niya. And then anemia, of course, uh, lalo na yung because it's feeding on the intestinal content. Uh, it, it's feeding on the it's attached to the intestinal lining of the cecum. All right. Now, what type of anemia is caused by heavy whipworm infection? This is very important. Why? Because um, Because there is a there is a specific type of uh, infection from a parasite, another parasite that is um, that is different from whipworms. So the type of anemia associated with it, based on uh, based on based on the RBC index, is normocytic hypochromic anemia. Really, sir? Yes, you would just develop iron deficiency anemia, but the space, but it will not. But it's not as heavy as. Uh, it's not as heavy as hookworm infection. Kasi blood talaga ang kinakain ni, ano, ni, ni hookworms. While, like your strike you, like you, you would just get, uh, it, it's, blood is basically just collateral damage. Alright? Because it attaches, it, it latches itself to the intestinal wall. It could cause wound, uh, scar, uh, it could cause, it could cause scratches to your to your cecum or your cecal area as it attaches to the large intestine and blood goes out. Okay? So, yeah. So, blood kasi talaga ang kinakain ni, ano, kinakain ni, ni, hookworms. Alright? Now, the result of severe whipworm infection is, of course, rectal prolapse. Okay? So, you might see exam questions that say patient, patient was, uh, patient was admitted to the surgical ward for the removal uh, for for uh, rectal surgery patient has rectal prolapse characterized by whitish whitish disco discoloration of um, adult worms hanging from the hanging from the patient's rectum which of the following the, which of the following is a diagnostic the the following findings is a diagnostic is diagnostic picture for which of the following parasites ganun yung mga question questions natin di ba mga ganun Huwag kakalimutan, kaya, ka, kaya important na nilagay ko to kasi rectal prolapse is seen in patients with severe whipworm infections. Okay? What other parasite is usually found as a co-infection with whipworms? Right? What other parasite? 
What other parasite is usually found in whipworms? Co infection. They, they call this the unholy three. James Paul. Talaga, alam na alam talaga ni James Paul lahat. Ascarispo. Ano pa? Ascaris lang. Hookworm. Amanda. The unholy Hookworm. three. Hookworm. Hookworm. And of course, kaya siya tatlo. Kaya nilagay ko yung tatlo para complete na yung list. Okay? Kaya nilagay ko tatlo kasi uh, <coughs> para complete na yung list. Okay? Alright? Hat. Alright? So it's hat. The Amanda. Alright? Please don't forget hat. This is known as your unholy three. Hookworm, Ascaris lumbricoides, and Trichuris trichiura. Alright? So, dalawa lang nilagay ni Sir Manuel. Kasi para hindi kayo mahirapan. Okay? Co-infection. Unholy tree. Okay? So, when I, I'll, I'll tell you guys a story. Uh, when I was a student, uh, we went to the... We went to our community development... Uh, our community de development activity uh, was going to... Um, the... I don't want to use the term dilapidated places na lang. Yun ang gusto kong terminology. Dilapidated places near our school. And would you believe it that I think four per, four people who we did fecal analysis or, or the, on actually tested with at least one or two parasites and one person tested with three parasites. So ganun talaga ka hirap ang, ano, ang healthcare sa atin sa, Fili sa Philippines. Walang, wala kasi wala masyadong health uh, health education sa public or public health education as well as <coughs> as, as well as the lack of healthcare delivery system uh, lack, la, lack in the resources of the healthcare delivery system in the Philippines so maybe here somebody would maybe somebody here in the future will work as part of the department of health sana naman kakatok ako sa ano nyo ngayon pa lang baka mamaya maging doktor kayo diba in the future baka naman Ma, ma prevent naman natin ang ano ang unholy tree infection because it's very bad it affects the it not only affects the the pay, the uh, usually lahat ng may infection uh, patient with with uh, with multiple parasitic uh, nematodal infection will be children and sayang kasi it will not only affect them physiologically but it also affects their uh, it also affects their development as children so mental so it affects both physical and mental development ng bata kasi nga nauubos yung nutrients kasi iba't ibang pa samot saring parasites yung infected uh, may infection eh di ba di ba di ba di ba malay nyo kaya pala kaya pala ano kaya pala kaya pala mahababa ang reading comprehension ng Philippines dahil dahil pala ang reading comprehension scores ng Philippines dahil pala nung lumalaki ang bata eh dahil dahil pala meron siyang unholy three infection di ba so please, baka mamaya, mayro, kumakatok na po ako sa puso mo, Amanda, malay mo maging manggagamot ka in the future, and you will, ha you will hold a position in higher office, I want you right now to target one of your agenda, kasi ako may gay agenda ako, alright? I, have a, you ha you ha I want you to have a different agenda, okay? Not my gay agenda, alright? So a different agenda would be for you to prevent multiple nematodal intestinal nematodal infection okay so anyway let's move on to capillaria philippinensis so capillaria philippinensis is actually a worm or a nematode uh, a nematode an intestinal parasite that was isolated in the philippines all right the reason why uh, the reason why it, it's important that i want you guys to know why it's uh, why uh, it's uh, the, its discovery was important in the philippines because of the, it's it's common name or other name who here knows the common name james paul james and then, and then, and then, no not james paul see si mary kay pa kay pala kasi siya lagi yung common name eh. she's the master of common names pudok worm pa pudok worm very good she's the she's really the master of common names i love it okay so yeah so pudok worm is the common name or the other name because it was it was the it was um i think in ilocos norte or somewhere i'm not sure i didn't read the full title but I, but what i know is it it uh, the discovery was um <coughs> the discovery was found in the philip the first case of pudok worm was found in the philippines i think in the 1980s or 1970s now what i need you to remember is the other names mystery disease uh, mystery worm, sorry. Mystery worm. Bakit ayaw mag-type? 
mystery worm all right so mystery worm okay so mystery worm why is it called mystery worm before before it was i before it was classified as uh, I'll give you a historical background first. Before it was ca before it was characterized as or classified as Capillaria philippinensis, people would say people 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 said that this disease is mysterious because it would just pop up out of the blue. Basta basta lang lalabas, parang magical masyado, parang ang usapan no, usap usapan noon nung unang panahon somewhere in northern Luzon guys talagang pag ang, pag nag storytell talaga ako para si Rufa May no ganito kasi yon okay nung discover siya kasi bigla na lang nagkakaroon ng sakit yung mga tao ganon so sinabi na lang ng mga tao misteryoso um, misteryoso yung mga misteryoso yung kaganapan di ba Ganon. Kaya mystery worm ang tawag sa kanya kasi mysterioso yung causes. Kasi wala namang microscope sa Philippines at that time in 1970s and 1980s. I think uh, I think it was only it was only available in the I think uh, I think 1969 was the first uh, was the first time the practice of medical technology was uh, uh, was implemented in the Philippines. And at that time, the provinces didn't have any didn't have any clinical laboratory, regional clinical laboratories in in the provinces, right? So the circumstances of the infection were, of course, unknown, di ba? So kaya nga tinawag na mystery worm or mystery disease, okay? So uh, now nowadays it's now known as pudok worm because it is Capillaria, Capillaria philippinensis. But maybe some, maybe they would give you a case presentation that they say mysterious, a mysterious form of disease, blah 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 blah, uh, gives you the signs and symptoms, signs and symptoms. So let let's talk about the, uh, let, uh, yeah. So disease associations. Um, Pudok disease or mystery disease as the, the reason why is because of, of my explanation earlier um, The main habitat of Capillaria philippinensis. It's the first letter in cash. Therefore it is C So Capillaria philippinensis is habit uh, they is considered an inhabitant uh, as an inhabitant of the small intestines All right now. What are the two types of female Capillaria? My gosh, sir. Meron pa palang two types my gosh, kailangan pa ba namin alalahanin yan? Yes, I would like to put a star on this one because there are two types of capillaria organisms. Now, where, now um, it's important in, I think, in the ACP because they'll give you a picture of, uh, they'll give you a, a picture of, um, of the organism and you need to differentiate it. And they'll give you several, several, several case presentations, uh, several, several choices. Select all of the following that apply. And one of the things that I need you to remember is the two types of female capillaria the two types of female capillaria is divided into a typical and typical all right so when when it is atypical it has more than two to three rows of uterine structures known as a uterine uh, a uterine uh, a, a uterine file or we call it as a uterine uh, uterine uh, uterine structures okay or uterus it is also larviparous meaning to say that the larva comes out of the uterine wall or the uterine structures all right now when there is an atyp uh, when there is typical meaning typical there's a single row in the uterus or a single row of eggs in the uterus and it is oviparous that is the difference between atypical and typical okay all right so single row single row oviparous typical atypical Two to three rows of eggs in the uterus, or multi, multi, uh, multi uterine, and uh, larviparous. All right, clear, 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 clear. And difference between the typical and the atypical one. All right, now let's di let's differentiate uh, <coughs> let's differentiate the form of atypical capillaria ova. Um, atypical one, the typical one, uh, and versus the atypical one. So um, the typical one is characterized as a peanut shape one with bipolar plugs okay peanut shaped the atypical one has no bipolar plug this is the reason why or a thin thin shell this is the reason why i wanted you guys to remember the difference between trichuris trichura and capillaria philippinensis oba because in trichuris trichura it's football shape lemon shape blah 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 but there is a thick bipolar mucus plug Okay, but for Capillaria philippinensis, it's different. 
it is characterized as peanut shape and it has bipolar plugs but it's not as thick as that of um as that of the whipworm ova okay additionally there is a typical version and it has the same shape or same characteristics but it has a thinner outer shell and has no bipolar mucus uh, bipolar mucus plug okay now let's talk about the transmission the transmission of uh, the transmission of capillaria filipinensis is due to ingestion of freshwater fish all right so there's a lot of fishes there there's a lot of fish there in the in northern luzon um, i'll read some of them for you it's not typical for you to it's not typical for you it's not necessarily important for you guys to remember these things but what i want you to what i want you to get from this particular slide is that it is ingested from freshwater fish okay so you ingest either the ova or the larva okay or the whole worms itself or the whole worm itself depending on depending on uh, maybe kumain ka tas may tira-tira tas naisingan nung kasama mo yung adult worm tas nakain mo yung adult worm tas buhay pa siya depends as long as the transmission is ingestion now what are the organisms what are the freshwater fishes in or the, the freshwater fish in the nor, in northern Luzon. We have Hypsilotris bipartita or Epon, Bagsang, Bagtu, and Birot. Um, I really don't know what these things are. I searched for them in, the, in Google prior to this discussion. Unfortunately, all it's giving me are pictures of bagoong. So I'm assuming kina bina bagoong yung mga yan. Kasi nakikita ko lang sa ano. Kasi nakikita ko lang sa nakikita ko lang sa Google ang binibigay sa akin lagi mga picture ng bagoong. Type nyo sa ano, type nyo sa, type nyo sa Google ngayon, bagsang. May, may, ang bote ng bagoong ang lalabas sa, ano ninyo, sa, sa search bar nyo. Anyway, let's move on. Um, this is a specific habitat of um, Capillaria philippinensis. Again, I mentioned before, it's in the small intestine, but there is a specific portion of the small intestine. We have the duodenum, jejunum, and the, jejunum, and the ilium. Saan siya doon? Sabi niya Maria Orquiza, Mary Orquiza, it's in the jejunum. Let's see if she's actually correct. It's in the jejunum. Correct! Correct! O, di ba kasi kaya tinanong ko kayo kanina kung game ka na ba eh. Siyempre, Chris Aquino dapat. Medyo, medyo, medyo ngongo. Correct! Ganon! Medyo pumipiyok na Chris Aquino. Kasi may sipon siya. Anyway, let's talk about the, let's talk about the, uh, what, what do you call this? The signs and symptoms of Cap Capillaria Philippinensis. Malabsorption, burburingmi, and hyper hypotension. All right. So, malabsorption syndrome is, is characterized by what? Having what? Having fatty fat uh, fat globules in the stool. All right. So, what is borboring me? Can anybody tell me what is borboring me in five seconds? Para hindi kayo makapagano, makapagtype. Five, four, three, two, one. Gurgling of stomach. Ay naunahan ako. Di ba ang bilis? I love it. Ginilin. Ginilin ko na talaga. Ginilin ko na talaga ang anak is number three ko. Ginilin ha. Ginilin. All right. So it's actually borboring me. Or right. so, so gargling of the stomach or or the abdomen na lang. Kasi pag sinabi mo stomach, stomach ko talaga eh. Di ba? Pero what is that? What is actually gargling is in your intestinal part. Is your intestinal uh, portion. Is the intestinal portion of your of your gastrointestine, gastrointestinal tract, okay, or your digestive tract. Now let's move on to another intestinal parasite. This is Strongyloides tercoralis. What is the other name for Strongyloides tercoralis? Maria Christina McKay, alam mo na yan. Treadworm. All right. Anong, anong chedworm? Commission of Higher Education Threadworm. <laughs> ah, okay. Thread kasi. Akala ko chedworm. Talaga, talagang lumalabas yung pagiging English teacher ko dito sa mga batang to. Threadworm. Akala ko ano? Akala ko worm ni Sarah Duterte. <laughs> kasi siya, siya bang ano? Ay, depend pala siya. Sorry. Hindi pala siya. Worm na, worm na makukuha kay Sarah Duterte. Ganon. Hindi. Strogyloides stercoralis is known as the threadworm. Thank you so much, McKay. All right, mispronunciation, but that's fine with me because you're going to be asked the question on how you. Uh, you're going to be asked the question, uh, multiple choice, so it doesn't really matter how you spell it or how you pronounce it. Now let's talk about the unique life cycle characteristic of Strogyloides stercoralis. What's what's what did I mention earlier uh, about the infections in in parasites? There are several, right? Auto infection, direct, indirect. Right? So here, the unique life cycle is that it's a facultative parasite. 
Okay, it's a facultative parasite. What do you mean by facultative parasite? So in the net, it's not necessarily a parasite. It can live as a is a free as a free living parasite or as a free living nematode, but it can also be it can be it can also have a parasitic life cycle. All right, so that is basically the difference. That's what is unique about Strongyloides tercoralis. Okay, the term for the disease associated with it is your strongyloidiasis, of course. And the sino nakakaalam yung common name ng disease associated with strongyloides circulis. Tagang mga common names talaga alam talaga ni ano. Commoner talaga to si ano, si Maria Cristina May Sabado. All right. Commoner, commoner Sabado. What is your answer? Sir, yan ba yung Cochinchina diarrhea? Yes, girl. Yes. Paki-balakbakan nga yung baklang balakbak. Paki-balakbakan nga, guys. Hindi ko ayan. Ay, ang galing. Hi, hindi baklang balakbak yan. Girl, hindi baklang balakbak. Yan. Nigel, hindi balakbak. Yung balakbak na tinuro ko sa inyo. Ano yung tinuro ko? Yan, oh. Yas, queen. Yas. Ganon. Alright. James Paul, gusto ko makita. Ganun yung ginagawa mo din. <laughs> gusto ko. Ginapanig ko lang yung mga students. Gusto ko. James Paul, gusto ko makita mo. <laughs> makita na gano'n din si James Paul. Patingin na pala. Pa. <laughs> Para na pag nag-ano na kasi diyan. Wisit ka, James Paul. Anyway, let's move on. Alright. Now, based on the reproductive behavior of, ster of Sterdoloides Caracoralis, what characteristics may be associated with the females? It's parthenogenetic. Alright? So, parthenogenetic. It undergoes parthenogenesis. Right? It is capable of multiplying by itself. It doesn't need a man. It's an independent woman. Who girl. It's an independent, independent woman. Right? So it's an independent organism. It can live by itself. I don't need a man to get, I don't need a man to get me pregnant. Ganon. Alright? Because it impregnate itself. Alright? So, uh, para hindi nyo makalimutan, it, I would call it the Lady Gaga worm. Alright? The Lady Gaga worm. Kasi may issue na si Lady Gaga dati is, ano, is a hermaphrodite. Which is, of course, false. As, a per as one of Lady Gaga's monsters, she is not. She is not a hermaphrodite, so please stop stop associating parthenogenesis with with Lady Gaga, okay? Now, what is the mode of transmission of Strongyloides tercoralis? My goodness, guys, I I mentioned this several times earlier in the morning, uh, earlier in our discussion. If you cannot answer this, I I suggest you return to your parasitology lectures. Maria Cristina Sabado. Skin penetration of what? Of the larva or of the ova? <laughs> larva which type of larva patay na uh, pero tayo tinatawag na mga larva kanina what larva oh. James Paul ayan na naman si James Paul oh. di daang si James ano po L3 L3 po L3 ano yung L3 nako I know L3 Filariform larva. Yes, very good. The third stage filariform larva. Kaya hindi matatawag tayo ng H1, uh, R1, R2, L1, uh, R1, R2, H, uh, F1, F2. Diba? Kanina may sinabi ako. So, it's the same thing. So Basically, it's L300. O taray talaga si, si Sir Marco talaga. L300. It undergoes several life cycles before it becomes an adult. 300 times siyang magmomolt. Diba, Sir Marco? Ikaw talaga, you are confusing us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on. All right. Now, what stage of Strongyloides tercoralis is passed out in the feces? Patay tayo dyan na naman. Naku, napaka-specific na mga questions ng board examiners natin. All right. So, infective stage, infective stage is also uh, is also specific. The, the, uh, the one that is passed out in the feces is also specific. What is is the answer to this question. Patay tayo. Sige, I will challenge James Paul. Sige, hindi, ka mag, hindi mo kailangan magtaas ng kamay James Paul ngayon. What would you usually see in the feces of patients infected with strongyloides tercoralis? Usually ha. So I didn't say all the time. Usually. Alright? Baka mamaya yan na naman si Mark Segi. Nakikita ko pinipiloso po na naman ako. <laughs> Alright. So wala? Wala mga kasagot? Ayun na si James Paul. James Paul daw eh. Kunyari, hindi ko nakita na may sumagot. Rabditiform larva. Very good, very good. Why? Why is the rabditiform larva passed out in the feces? Bakit? Because it is the feeding stage. 
Yan yung, he is, uh, this is the larva that is amassing energy. Kasi ready na siya. Da- dapat pagka, re- pagka, papasok, pagka papasok siya sa definitive host, dapat ready na siya. Kailangan na siya makapenetrate. So, kailangan makakain na siya. di ba? Ganon. Alright? So, rabditiform larva, yan yung mga larva na nakabuka yung bunga nga. Okay? Pag filariform larva, yan yung parang needle na yung mga bunga nga. Bakit bunga nga ang term na ginagamit ko? Kasi yung tinatawag na buccal cavity. Para hindi nyo makalimutan, bunga nga, buccal cavity. Okay? Pag nakabuka yung bunga nga, rabditiform larva. Pag nakasara na yung bunga nga, tapos nakapoint out na, yan na yung filariform larva. Bakit filariform larva an effective stage? Kasi para siyang needle. Papasok na siya sa loob. Si Eliza Galan, hindi siya sure. Galian pala. Galian ba? Galan. Galian. Anyway. Galian po. Alright. Okay. Thank you for correcting me. Sometimes I need to be corrected. I'm not perfect, right, Eliza? Right? Okay. Now, let's move yes. on to the... Let's move on to the characteristic shape of the ova. Sir, in a, sir, can we identify if it's actually strongyloides or corallis? Yes. In some cases, you would see the ova. Alright? It is square or Chinese lantern shape. Alright? So, I think you guys are familiar with this one. Oh, um... Uh, we're not going to dwell deeper on this too much because it might confuse you with the infectious stage and the uh, stages that you can see in the, st- the feces. So I would just rather add this into your, into your compendium of knowledge, your ever-going compendium of knowledge when it comes to parasitology. All right? Now, square-like or Chinese lantern shape. Now, what are the three types of life cycles associated with Strongyloides norcoralis? I'm going to talk about it as I mentioned earlier. As I mentioned earlier, there is a direct life cycle. Who, who raised her hand? Un- unfortunately, I will discuss this one because it will take time if a, per, if a, if a student discusses this. Um, let's talk about a direct life cycle. So from filariform larva, it would exit through the bowel and enter to the definitive host through skin penetration. If it's an indirect life cycle, the adult male and the females copulate outside the host. So free living shy. So it's the free living life cycle as well, the indirect life cycle. They will copulate and the released eggs in the process will develop into the larval stages in the soil. Okay? In the soil. Okay, that stage, the stage that will be infectious is still the filariform larva. Okay? Next is the auto-infection stage. The rabditiform larva will develop into a rabditiform into a filariform larva inside the Definitive host. That that's in the case here. It's Nigel, right? So, for example, Nigel has uh, Nigel already has a pre-existing, a pre-existing. Uh, sorry, I forgot to change the slide. So, for example, Nigel has already. We're talking about the auto-infection form, right? So, for example, Nigel has an auto. Uh, Nigel has an auto-infection, uh, an auto-infection of of Strongyloides coralis. She already had the pre. pre she, she already had. Uh, has a pre-existing um, a pre-existing infection of Strongyloides tercoralis. What happens is that because the organism is larviparous, it will the the larva the rabditiform larva will develop in the stomach in the, the small intestine, and then it will mature into a filari- filariform larva, and then it will uh, it will mature into an adult worm as well inside Nigel. All right, nagets mo na gel kung bakit auto infection siya. So what's the difference between what's the difference between the type of auto infection caused by Strongyloides tercoralis and the auto infection caused by auto infection caused by um uh, Enterobius vermicularis? Can somebody give me the answer? Yes, sige sige. Kailangan ko po po ba magkamot ng puwet para makakuha ako ng ano? So based on the based on my description already, it's not it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have a, uh, oh, okay, all right. So somebody raised their hand, they raised their hand. Okay, who was that? James Paul, is that you again? I didn't see. Sir, internal po yung strange. Yes, very good. Why is this important? Why did I mention this? Because this is very important. The reason being is because it was asked in the exam, in the board exam. Which of the following organisms causes an internal auto-infection. Ang sinagot ko noon, alam ko nagkamali ako, practice question lang naman yun, buti na lang. Um, uh, <coughs> ang sinagot ko, ang sinagot ko, enterobius vermicularis because I knew that uh, the only, I was thinking of uh, strongyloides tercoralis and the, and the other one was uh, uh, enterobius vermicularis but at that time, I didn't know that there was a different, there were two, there were two types of auto-infections. Okay? So, tinanong yan sa exam ko. Okay, guys? Practice question lang yun. Buti na lang. At least naalala ko siya. Alright? Pinagtatawanan ako ni J- Pinagtatawanan ako ni Mark Segi. Kasi, my God, sir. Gano? <laughs> my gosh. So, what type of... Sir, sir, <laughs> sir kasi may sinabi si Sir Mack eh. 
<laughs> ano yung sinabi niyo? Weak. <laughs> ano ka ba, Sir Marco? Malay ko ba? Hindi naman, hindi pinasadahan lang, pinapasadahan lang naman namin yun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Grabe ka naman sa akin. Pero pinapasadahan ko naman, pinasadahan ko lang yan noon eh. Siyempre, siyempre nagmamadali ka, time pressured ka po. Siyempre, nag-focus ka doon sa mga ano eh. Wala pa ako yung mga test-taking, test-taking tips na binibigay ko sa inyo ngayon eh. Wala kayong Sir Manuel noon. Ah, wala kaming Sir Manuel noon. So, bali sariling sikap ang tawag doon. ba diba? di ba Sir Marco? Buti nga to mga to, meron pa mga videos eh. So, sa palik ko to mga to, tapos mabagsak pa rin. Kami, kailangan pumunta pa ng library. Nakakaloka kayo ha? Nakakaloka kayo talaga. Kung ako yun, may Google ako noon. just ko siguro, ano ako, sumakum laude ako noon. Kasi napakadaling i-access yung information. Noong time namin, kailangan pumunta ng library. Pero hindi pa ako ganun katanda. Ano ba? 2011 ako gumraduate. Stop it. Stop it. I'm still young. I'm still young, Jenny Lynn. Okay? Pinanganak kita when I was a teen. Okay? Pinanganak kita when I was a teen. I'm a teen mom. Charing. <laughs> Charing. So the answer to this question is, of course, uh, what is the type of oral infection seen in strongoloidus circularis? It's internal oral infection, as I mentioned before. Right? Now, indicate the route traveled by the filariform larva. So obviously, it will start in the skin. And from the skin, it will go to the bloodstream. It will go to the heart, the lungs, the, tri the alveoli, the trachea, the, the pharynx. And then it will go, essentially, it will go to, the, to the, the, the esophagus. And from the esophagus, it will be swallowed. And then the, the, and then the small intestine where it becomes the habitat until it becomes an adult worm. All right, so ganon. So, paano ang paano ang shortcut there? From the heart, from the heart, from the from the blood to the heart to the lungs and to the esophagus where you swallow it. So, kailangan ko pang alalahanin yung in between ng lungs, yung alveoli. Talagang kailangan pa specific, sir. Siyempre pa akyat na siya. Pupunta siya ng heart, pupunta ng lungs, tapos akyat na siya from the from the heart it will go from the alveoli to the trachea to the pharynx and then from the esophagus where it becomes swallowed. So, ganun lang yung tinatandaan ko lagi. So, silalagay ko na lang respiratory tract na lang tapos ano. Huwag nyo nang alalahanin yung in-between nung lungs, trick, eh, mga ganyan na yan. Actually, dapat sub-bullet siya ng lungs eh. But, I want to make life difficult for you guys. So, I didn't edit it. Anyway, let's move on. What are the classifications of strongyloidiasis? Alright, so strongyloidiasis is characterized into different types of infections. It could be, uh, it could be, uh, it could be cutaneous strongyloidiasis caused by the filariform larva. It could be pulmonary strongyloidiasis, especially when there is heavy infections of the traveling or the migrating organisms or the migrating larval parasites or the uh, the, the migrating filariform larva, okay, on its way to the esophagus, or it could be the uh, intestinal uh, intestinal infection light infection lang siya hindi pa ka heavy all right actually would you believe it intestinal infection is actually the most the less severe among the cases or and the cutaneous one of course why because onti lang yung ano onti lang yung parasitic count pag pulmonary sobrang heavy na yung infection na nag, nag nagsisiksikan na sila on, on its way to the esophagus okay so nagkakaroon na ng ubo ang pasyente kasi nga dumanda na bubutas na yung nabubutas na yung lining ng ano nabubutas na yung lining ng, ng, ng lungs ng patient so medyo severe na severe heavy infection sa si pulmonary one all right now the cutaneous the cutaneous type of strongyloidiasis is caused by the larval skin penetration of course a larva the larva of uh, of any organism that will in, that will enter your skin is considered as foreign therefore Therefore, your white blood cells will at, will consider it as foreign. Kaya magkakaroon ng kaya magkakaroon ng cutaneous type, magkakaroon ng rashing. Hindi mo alam pala na hindi mo alam yung rashes mo pala na maliliit na mga kuntil na rashes dun sa may ano mo, sa paa mo, yun pala entry point na pala yun ng parasite. Okay? So that's the reason why we have what you call we have what you call the larval skin penetration. Okay? Now the highest sensitized, uh, in highly sensitized individual cutaneous strongyloidiasis may be unsuccessful. This results to a characteristic larval migrants known as, ito a specific question, it's a specific question. Specifically, yung patients na mga ano, very active ang immune system nila, hindi katulad ko, katulad ng sinabi ni Sir Marco kanina, weak daw. Um, <coughs> Um, in cases na super, super active ang immune system ng mga pasyente, hence the term highly sensitized, cutaneous infection will be unsuccessful, may be unsuccessful. Ang nangyayari is 
there will, will be what you call larval currents. Okay, the, co the correct term is larval currents or known as the larval rays, the linear urticarial lesions on the skin. Yung parang nagre-raising yung mga larva kasi hindi sila makapasok sa bloodstream. Okay? So, usually, ang route nga nila, di ba, is from the skin to the bloodstream. Pero since masyadong malakas ang, ano, ang immune system ng isang pasyente, hindi makapasok. So, ang, ang, ang nangyayari, instead of going vertically, horizontally na lang. So, para nag-racing na lang sila. Hence, the term larval currents or the larval race. Di ba? Alright? Next, what type of diagnostic technique is used to demonstrate Progeloides tercoralis. We have what you call, uh, we have what you call the, uh, because it's difficult to isolate, uh, it's difficult to isolate the filaria, uh, the filariform larva. Um, the most uh, common way, uh, the most common way, or the traditional way rather, uh, that doesn't require any type of serological testing or serological testing or what uh, another other form of uh, automated analyzer is your Harada Mori technique or the filter, filter paper culture strip technique. Okay? Another one is the Bayerman fecal suspension technique, which basically is uh, uh, allowing you to demonstrate the rabditiform larva. Okay? Rabditiform larva. Why did I put an emphasis on the rabditiform larva? Why? Why, why, why? Why, why, why? Because if it's the filariform larva, that's another organism. Okay? You can still use Harada Mori and the filter paper strip culture technique or the Bayerman suspension technique. But what you would demonstrate in another organism, which will, which will be the one that we're going to talk about later before our break, is the rabditiform larva. Okay? For Strongyloides tercoralis, it's important that you remember that the rabditiform larva is your diagnostic stage. So, ayun na naman. Ang dami naman mga terminologies, te sir. So, what is the diagnostic stage of Ascaris lubricoides? Ascaris lubricoides muna tayo kasi para alam niyo kung anong ibig sabihin ng mga diagnostic stage na yun ang mga pinagsasabi ko. Ginilin, anak, number three. Junakis, number three. What is the diagnostic stage of of uh, Ascaris lubricoides? Fertilized ova. Very good. What about what about for Enterobius vermicularis? Anybody? What about, uh, let's ask, uh, Crisia cenaris. Cenaris. Sorry. Crisia. Crisia. Ako, hindi siya gumagalaw. Parang feeling ko recorded video lang ito nung nakatapat sa webcam. Ay, hindi. Gumagalaw naman pala. Pass? Or fail? <laughs> or fail? Patay na. Okay. So, the diagnostic stage is the eggs. So, what is the diagnostic stage? Based on definition itself, it is the stage at which a person, uh, a patient could be diagnosed. Okay? So, you look at the life cycles. Is it the larva? Is it the ova? Or is it the adult worms? Okay? So, the diagnostic stage is the stage or in the life cycle of the organism where you can see it in clinical specimens. Please don't forget that. Okay? Okay, okay, clear, 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 clear. Now, how many stool samples should be collected if you are diagnosing a case of strongyloidiasis or Cochin China disease? There is, what? Three samples required. You need to have three, three samples because, because the organism is larviparous. There is what you call, uh, the, the, uh, why it, why it, it is, why it is necessary for you guys to collect three samples is because of what you call larval showers. Okay? There is a specific uh, there is a specific day at which the larva will come out of the of the adult worms. Okay? Alright? Now, what other sample may be collected in cases of, of negative strongyloidis uh uh Strongyloides fecal sample uh, may be collected to diagnose ter Strongyloides tercoralis in case of a negative fecal sample. Sige nga. Other samples. Other samples. Patay. Wala na naman tayo. Tandaan nyo lang yung cash. ba? Saan galing ang cash? Sa senior intern. Charot talaga kayo. Charot talaga. Sa senior intern na naman. Hindi. Yung cash galing sa small intestine. Saan ko collect? sa ang part ng small intestine? Sa duodenum tayo naman. Hindi sa jejunum. Okay? 
duodenal fluid. You use the duodenal fluid. You collect duodenal fluid. And there are two types of collection methodologies. You either use the duodenal or drastic purge or the purga. Okay? Or you use duodenal intubation. So, uh, basically, what they, what duodenal intubation is, they will put a they will put a suction uh, a suction mechanism or a suction apparatus in in, in your in your uh, through your gastrointestinal tract, and they would they would uh, they would <coughs> they would suck out the contents of your duodenum. Okay, now let's talk about hookworms or the ancylostoma species and the Necator americanus. Okay, now. There are five species now, all right? There are five species now. I just added cats and dogs. But I want you guys to remember A, B, D, C. The, I remember earlier in, our, in, the first time, uh, in the first part of our discussions earlier, I wanted you guys to remember A, B, D, C. Okay? Um, don't forget, uh, you guys are correct with everything, but the reason why I wanted you guys to remember this, this one is because... Uh, let's skip this. You guys already answered this. Necator americanus, Ancylostoma brasiliensi, Ancylostoma caninum, Ancylostoma duodenali, and Ancylostoma selanicum. Omit the, uh, first your Ancylostoma selanicum. The only difference between uh, between those uh, between this organism to the other organisms that I just mentioned is that Ancylostoma selanicum is a hybrid uh, has a hybrid infection uh, has a hybrid uh, hybrid infection infectivity. It can infect cats or dogs. Okay. Now, speaking of which, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about ABDC. Bakit kailangan natin pag-usapan? Kasi mas madali ninyong maalala yung mas madali ninyong maalala yung second question na to. Differentiate a species of hookworms based on the number of teeth-like structures. Tinandaan nyo makanin yung ABDC nyo. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin ng ABDC, Mark, Mark Segi? America's Best Dance Group. <laughs> ne ne Necator Americanus Ancelestoma Duodenale Hi, uh, ABDC! Ah, uh, okay po. Kasi nandiyan si Amanda Ameri eh. Americanus Brasilense Duodenale Tsaka Kanainom po. Alright. So, bakit gusto kong paalala sa inyo? Kasi, this is the, an the, the reason being is because in your exams, they will ask this question. How many teeth structures, how many pairs of teeth are seen in these organisms? Diba? Alright, uminom lang ng tubig. Sorry, nauubo. Alright, so kailangan maalala ninyo kasi bakit? 0, 1, 2, 3. A, B, D, C. O diba? America's Best Dance Group. Alright? 0, 1, 2, 3. Sir, paano namin maalala? Sir, paano namin maalala yun? Kasi, tingnan nyo ang sakit. Semilunar plates lang si Necator Americanus. Therefore, it doesn't have teeth. Okay? Cutting plates, semilunar plates, that's the thing. Alright? It's zero. Alright? So, Ancylostoma brasiliensis has one pair. Ancylostoma duodenale has two pairs. Ancylostoma caninum has three. So, it's easier for you guys to remember. Right? Diba, Amanda? A, B, D, C. Don't forget. Basta si Amanda, I prepared I prepare this just for you. It is a special you, lecture just for you. Okay? All right, so I'm always taking your I'm always taking your welfare into consideration every time I I I make lectures for you guys just because I care so much of Amanda's uh, Amanda's feelings. All right, next other names for the hookworms. Okay, so miss miss other name tayo. Let's start with Necator americanus. Um, Sabado, where where have you been? Where art thou? Are you there? What's the what's the other name for Necator americanus? Uh, American hookworm, American murderer, new world hookworm. All right, very good. New world hookworm. All right, now, uh, <coughs> Ancylostoma brasiliensi and Ancylostoma caninum is basically the same. Uh, you could say that it's the Brazilian hookworm or the South American hookworm, right? And then caninum is basically cat hookworm, uh, dog hookworms. But what about Ancylostoma duodenale? What is the other name for Ancylostoma duodenale? Mark Segi. Old world hookworm. Okay, gets na pala lahat. So gets na lahat. So if I say So if I say um uh, let's just let's just pray. Let's just uh, work out with a, with a little bit of an exercise. 
Uh, say, for example, the question says here is blah, 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 clinical presentation, blah, 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 blah. And you found the two terms, adult worms upon, upon electron mic microscopy, di ba, social electron microscopy ang ginamit. Using, using silver iodide ions, di ba, social talaga, sir. Talagang electron microscopy ang ginamit, pulati lang yan, sir. <laughs> Talagang electron microscope ang ginamit, no? Showed three pairs of teeth. What organism do we have? Oh. Kananay, kay, kanay nung po, sir. Kasi nga, America's best dance group. Di ba? O na gets nyo na kung paano. Di ba? Kasi D. May A, B, D, C. Di ba? Pinagbaliktad lang natin. Di ba? Gets? Gets? Di ba madali na ako sa iba? Pag sinabi mo yung semi-lunar plates, ang hookworm na-isolate, na, 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 na recover sa patient. O ano na? Zero. Kasi walang teeth. Di ba? Semi-lunar plates. Semi-lunar cutting plates. Right? Ano may ibig sabihin ng semi-lunar plates? Mukhang moon. Diba? So, parang half-moon plates lang siya. Another terminology that you can use is half-moon plates. Half-moon clapping plates. Mga ganong terminologies. Mga arte na mga ano eh, mga scientists natin. Pinapahirapan yung mga third, pinapahirapan yung mga third year tsaka fourth year students natin ng medtech eh. Kung ano-ano mga channel nyo, mga tinuturo nila sa atin. Diba? So, this is the summary of the things that you need to remember. Alright? I didn't change the, I didn't change this one because obviously, you guys already know what that is. Alright? Now, which hookworm species can infect man? Which hookworm species can infect man? Yung talagang magkakaroon ng ano, ng adult worms sa patient. Sige nga, which species? Who knows here? Who knows? Alright, somebody raised their hand but I didn't see it. James Paul again. Dito kay James Paul, bida ang sarap. Okay, go. Ang tagal. Nagkatawag po. Tsaka? Ancelostoma. Ancelostoma what? All right, very good, very good, very good. Okay, so let's talk about the diseases: necatoriasis and ancylostomiasis. Okay, or ulceriasis, or ulceriasis, or tropical anemia for necator americanus. For ancylostoma duodenale, it's miner's anemia, ancylostomiasis. All right, so these are the disease association. Please don't forget this. Maybe they will give you a maybe they will give you a case of this one. But let's talk about the infect uh, hookworms that are infective to humans. They are infective to humans, okay? They're infective to humans, but but uh, they are are they infective to humans or only to animals? Actually, they would consider the hum humans as dead end, a dead end life cycle. So it includes, uh, it includes uh, Ancylostoma caninum, Ancylostoma brasiliensis, and Ancylostoma ceylanicum. Okay. Now, indicate the disease associated by each, by each, sir. Wala. All species cause CLM or known as cutaneous larval migrants. Okay? Cutaneous larval migrants. Hookworms that infect human are, are humans or that infect man are equipped with what reproductive structures? So there are two, right? Ancylostoma uh, necator americanus and Ancylostoma duodenale. They are, they, are, <coughs> they are equipped with copular, copula copulatory bursa. Okay? So, both of which are, are equipped with a reproductive structure known as a copulative bursa. So, it, it's, like, it's like the D for, the stu for, for if you want to call it in your layman's term. It's like the hookworm's D. Okay? Alright? Uh, Nicator americanus has a bar, pite, bar partate, meaning two, two, uh, two copulatory bursas or two branching out copulatory bursas that are, that are barbed or bristle-like. Grabe, matalim ang ano niya. Matalim ang bang copulate niya. Di ba? Whilst Ancylostoma duodenale is a copulatory bursa that is tripartite. Okay? So these are the answers. And it's simple and not bristle-like. Like, like uh, Nicator americanus. So simple lang siya. Parang ano lang siya. Parang talaga siyang ano. Parang normal siya. Alright? <laughs> okay? Simple lang siya. It's not bristle-like. It's tripartite. Uh, it's like a three-tongued It's like a three-tongued fork. Alright? If you look at it in the electron microscope. Now, which species of hookworm secrete a potent anticoagulant? Of course, it is Necator americanus and Necator... Uh, sorry, Necator americanus and Ancylostoma caninum. Uh, what structure is responsible for the secretion of this anticoagulant? This is known as the amphidal gland, located in the lateral margin for um, Necator americanus and for the cephalic... Uh, and for... for um, I don't know what call this... 
Arsinostoma caninum, it's in the cephalic region. Let me see if, uh, if my memory serves me right. Yeah, right. So, it secretes an anticoagulant. These are the organisms, these are the species of hookworm that can secrete an anticoagulant. And it's in the amphidal gland. Lateral margin for Nectar americanus. Cephalic region for um, Ancylostoma caninum. Now, mode of transmission. Who here knows the mode of transmission of hookworms? Same din ba ng direct? Uh, same lang din ba ng kanina ng example ko kay, ano, kay Mark Segi? Nagpupo lang si Mark Segi, tapos pupunta doon sa mga... Pupunta si Nigel, nakain yung mga ano, nakain yung oba. Ganun pa rin ba? Skin penetration. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those people who answered in the chat. Now, my next my next question is, what is the infective stage of the parasite? Patay na tayo dyan, guys. Paktay ka na diha, dai. No, Nigel? Paktay ka na diha, Nigel. The filariform larva. Very good. Very good. Filariform larva. Alright? So, that is actually the correct answer. Ay, meron pa lang nag-ano. Meron pa lang nag-comment sa chat natin, sa ano natin, sa live chat natin, Mark. Hindi, hindi ka nag-inform sa akin, ha? May nag-comment pala doon. Shoot this life. Iwa yan, friend. <laughs> Ay, nako. Sira ulo talaga yung mga, sira ulo talaga yung mga, ano, mga subscribers ko. <laughs> Alright. Now, let's go to, let's go to describe the appearance of a hookworm. It's ovoidal. Okay, it's thin shape, it's colorless, and it's a germ, it has a germ ball. The germ ball is known as the Morula ball. Okay, I'm not going to show it to you guys because it's not the diagnostic stage of, of hookworms. Okay, and of course, your target is the board exam. But because I'm feeling fancy today and it's about lunchtime, I'm going to, I'm going to send it to you guys. It's about lunchtime here. We have, do, we, do we have one hour? Pa? We have, do we have one hour, Mark? Barely, sir. Barely. So, okay. So, can we just continue until until we finish? Have a... All right. So, let's just continue. Okay. So, uh, where, wherever we where, wherever we finish, that's the one that we're going to continue until next week. Anyway, the appearance of a hookworm ova is ovoidal. It's colorless and it has a germ ball. The uh, the diagnostic stage the diagnostic stage rather pala is is still the oval stage. The ova stage. The ova stage pala. Mali pala ang sinabi ko kanina. Sorry. Nangungoko na si Sir Manuel. Okay, so, um, what does it look like? Sir, what does it look like? Right? So, it's like this. So, if you see here, that's the Borula ball. Right? Do you guys see the Borula ball? Clear? Clear ba, Mark? So, yun yung Google. Ginugel yes, ko na para sa inyo. Ito yung actual, ito yung the best uh, presentation niya kasi makikita niyo yung separation nung ano, nung Borula ball sa loob. Tsaka ito. Pag ito kasi parang pupu lang siya sa loob ng pupu, di ba? Di ba, Nigel? Di ba, Nigel? No? Parang igit lang yan sa loob ng igit, Nigel? No? Yes. No? Alright. Okay, so, mas gusto ko makita nyo yung, ano, yung itsura niya. Alright? Kasi in the laboratory, you might encounter this and we say, eh, sir, ano yan? Pwede mo natin ma-differentiate. Paano natin ma-differentiate kung ano species? Can we use the, the eggs to differentiate the species? Of course not. Diba? So you might be asked the question, can you, can you differentiate the species of, of hookworm infection? True or false? May mga ganun na question. Diba? So, yeah. There is a germ ball and there is a morula ball. Now, in fresh feces, how many cell divisions will, under, will the hookworm ova under, will a hookworm ova undergo? It's actually at about two to eight cell divisions. Actually, it's the only it's the only nematode ova where you can where 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 it's easy to visualize the cell division as I've shown you earlier, right? You guys see it earlier, right? Right, right, right. So I don't need to don't need to emphasize it to you guys. The cell division. Now, indicate the travel the route traveled by the filariform larva from the portal of entry to habitat. So again, from the skin, it will go to the blood or the lymphatics, and then it will go to the lungs, alveoli, bronchioles, pharynx, and the small intestine, right? It's the same process as Strongloides sarcoralis. The difference between the difference between the two is that it causes a different pathologic this this uh it, this it causes a different pathologic condition. Uh, the pathologic conditions associated with the larval stages. We're talking about the larval stages. All right, would be ground itch or dew itch. This is the severe itching from an allergic reaction at the site of oval entry. 
or larval entry, sorry, at the site of larval entry. We have also the pulmonary type, which is known as the Makata Wakana disease, or the pulmonary larval migrants. And obviously, we also have uh, we also have cutaneous larval migrants or your creeping eruptions. Yes, it's characterized as serpentinous lesions. When I say when we say serpentinous, it's like it's snake-like. Okay, serpentinous lesions in the skin, snake-like. It's especially it's especially common in cases where you are you have been infected with <coughs> with larva from non-human hookworm infections okay so it's a non-human hookworm infection all right so what are those ano yon brazilianzi and caninum right because the other one modonale and necator americanus or americanus is a human in fact a, a, a human parasite all right now, the pathologic conditions associated with hookworms associ uh, with their adult stages, in their adult stages, is of course hookworm anemia. All right? Hookworm anemia. Because the hookworms attach to the intestinal mucosa, they will cause anemia and they feed on blood. All right? Hypoalbuminemia is ex uh, excessive loss of blood and lymph fluid. Of course, the hookworms feed on, the hookworms feed on blood and lymph. Therefore, it causes hypoalbuminemia as well. So it not only affects the it not only affects the blood cell counts, but it also affects the blood volume. Okay, so albumin yung kina kain niya eh. So it not only affects the blood 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 cell counts, but also the blood, blood, blood volume. All right. Now, what is the blood picture of a patient infected with hookworm anemia? It's microcytic, hypochromic. Bakit? Bakit? Chronic hookworm infections actually causes iron deficiency anemia, all right? If it becomes chronic, okay? So, blood picture. Bakit microcytic hypochromic? Kasi ang target niya talaga is blood cells, okay? As opposed to what? Earlier. Earlier, ano yung pinag-usapan natin na organism that causes normocytic hypochromic anemia? Ako, nakalimutan na nila kagad. Kakadiscuss lang namin. Babalikan natin yung slide or may makakasagot. What about James Paul? Ako, ito yung isa sa may naka-important na questions. Bakit? Yung isa kasi, nag-attach lang siya, di ba? Nag-gets nyo? Yung isa nag-attach lang siya. Hindi naman talaga niya target yung blood cells. Ito talaga, ang target ng parasite na kainin is blood. So ano yon Yung pinag-usapan natin kanina that causes normocytic hypochromic anemia. Maria Christina K. Sabado or McKay. Ver... In German, my answer to your question is nine. It means it's wrong. No. <laughs> nine. All right. Okay, go. You can, you, can choose, you can choose among... Guys, there are guesses. Don't worry. If you are wrong, it means it's okay. It's okay. At least dito kayo nagkamali, hindi sa exam. Diba? What about Mark Segi? What's your guess? Trichuris, trichura pa. Very good. O, di ba? Ganun. Ganun. O. Hula lang yun, Mark. Or, ano, or alam talaga. Naalala ko. Naalala ko. <laughs> ah, I love it. Malakpakal ka natin ng badig na badig si Mark Segi, guys. Patigil naman sa, sa ano. Ataray, ataray. Nigel, ba't hindi ka pa mapalakpak? Para wala kang energy talaga kayong araw na to, guys. Girl, ha? Girl. Alam ko, pinirake tayo ng boyfriend natin. Pero the life must go on. Di ba? Katulad nga ng hanap ni Jeneline Marzan, na future future student, medical student ni Jeneline Marzan. Hindi na ako nagsabi ng gender. Kasi ayun na naman tayo. Lagi na lang, lahat na lang na ginaganyan ko. Lagi na lang ako, Mark. Bakit ka doon? <laughs> Mark, bakit ganun? Hindi po ako ano ha, I support your I support your rights and ano ba. Pero hindi po talaga, hindi ko talaga ina-expect. Every student talaga na pinapoint out ko kapag ka mga jowa bells, lagi na lang related to the LGBT community. I'm very sorry. It just it happened. It's a, it's a happenstance. I'm sorry or a serendipitous event. Okay? Now, let's talk about the concentration techniques that may be used to demonstrate hookworm ova. You can use Zinc sulfate flotation or formalin ether uh, technique. Okay, formalin ether and zinc sulfate flotation. Why? Because your diagnostic stage is, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, sorry, um, the, these techniques are used. Why? Because this is used in cases of light hookworm infection. So hindi pa severe. 
okay? Hindi pa severe. Eh kung heavy infection, sir, paano? Eh di direct, eh di direct, ano, direct fecal analysis, di ba? Bakit? Kasi yung malalaki na mga bulatin na yung makikita mo, tsaka yung ova, di ba? Nakakaloka, no? Ang dali-dali lang, no, Nigel, nagigigil ako, lumalabas ang ano ko, ang ilongga accent ko, kahit hindi naman ako ilongga, nagigigil ako, ganon. Alright, so yun, for light hookworm infections, you use these rotation techniques. Demonstration of hookworm oma. So, ginagawa pa ba siya sa lab? Yes. Ginagawa pa siya sa lab. Actually, I've been working for six years in different laboratories and we still have reagents for flotation techniques. Okay? So, please be mindful that although these are traditionally, that this was discovered probably somewhere around the 1950s or 1960s, I'm not sure, these are still in use. These are still in use. Okay? So, please be mindful. Zinc sulfate flotation and formalin ether concentration technique. Okay? So, ano kay, ano? Ano kay Strongyloides stercoralis? Haradamori. Okay? Haradamori and... Ano yun? Babalikan ko kasi nakalimutan ko eh. Madali. Nakakalimot din si Sir Manuel. Huwag kayong charotera dyan. Ano nga yun? Uh, where is that? Haradamori and Bayerman fecal suspension. Ah, yeah. I forgot to mention. Yung Bayerman, ano? Yung Bayerman... Buti na lang naalala ko. Yung Bayerman fecal uh, fecal concentration. What what we do there is we still put it in, we still put the sample or, or the feces in a in a apparatus. And what we what we do there is there is a two indwelling tubes. One where the sample is put on a filter paper and gauze or uh, there's a there's a embudo. Ano ba ano ba English ng embudo? Uh, a funnel, right? A funnel. Oh, no. There's a there's a funnel, and you put the sample there on top of the uh, on top of that funnel is of course the is of course your filter paper, and then you uh, and then you put na na normal sal normal saline on that one, and then it's connected to a tube that will bring the that will bring the filtrate to the bottom part of the tube. So what happens there is that there's a free flowing. Uh, it, it, you're, you don't force the fr the filtration technique to happen. What happens is the filariform larva will travel to the filtrate. Lalabas nila doon. Kasi yun lang yung may flow eh. Okay. So uh, let me open paint. Uh, asa na ba yun? Hindi ko alam kung ginawa niyo to as an experiment in school. Pero this is how I would use it. I would do it. Okay. So, ito yung funnel, kunwari. Okay. Bakit ganyan ang funnel mo, sir? Ba't parang hindi siya triangle? Sir, hindi siya triangle. Okay, so yan yung funnel mo. Okay. Okay. Medyo challenging to, ha? Okay, so dadaan yung... If a funnel mo dyan yung tae, okay? So ito, for example, yung, ta, yung, yung pupo. Okay? Merong filter... May, there is a filter paper here in between and you dilute the sample you continuously dilute the sample and you continuously mix the sample at least, at least it until it's homogenized i know kadiri i know kadiri kadiri to din discuss ko guys ha yaki talaga pero wala tayong magagawa yan ang trabaho natin as medtech wag kayong charotera diyan okay all right so dadaan yan dyan sa may funnel and that funnel is connected to a tube lining that funnel is connected to a tube lining where it's caught on to another another test tube. I so, so it there's a tube here. Imagine lang natin test tube siya. So dadaan yung pupu from here. Uh, let me change the color of my pencil. We'll come from here. The filariform larva will travel by itself. Okay? So you don't necessarily uh the the fluid is so uh it's so mobile. It's uh, the fluid is so mobile that the filariform larva can freely travel to the filtrate from the filter paper, uh, from the initial suspension. Gets nyo? Okay, so parang sinasalo siya. Okay, so parang sinasalo siya nung ano, nung end test tube natin. Okay? Clear? So yun yung Bayerman technique. Nakalimutan ko palang i-discuss sa inyo yun. Kasi, kaya pa sabi ko, parang, parang may sam, meron pa akong ito, meron pa akong sasabihin sa ano, may, may gihambal pa ako, Nigel, sa inyo, di ba? May hambal pa ako. Nakalimutan ko yung hambal ko na ano, iba. Alright, so yun. Okay. So, microcytic hypochromic anemia is the, uh, is the disease that we're going to, that we talked about. Now, uh, concentration techniques, 
sigsulfate flotation, formalin ether. Wala masyadong technique siya. It's not like the Harada Mori filter paper technique and the Bayerman technique. What you do here is you just add the, pe- the fecal suspension and use zinc sulfate, uh, zinc sulfate or formalin ether, depending on the technique that you're using. If it's zinc sulfate fl- flotation, what you're going to expect is the, pilar- the larva to go on the top of the solution. That's why you put a slide on top of it. If it's formalin ether concentration, ova will go at the bottom and the larva will float on the top. Okay? That's the difference between these two things. Now, as opposed to the techniques that I told you guys earlier, the Bayerman technique and the Harada Mori technique, the organisms here or the larva here is dead already. Kasi nga zinc sulfate yung ginamit mo, tsaka ano, tsaka, tsaka formalin ether. Obviously, the organisms are dead already. Alright? Next, uh, what techniques may be used to demonstrate demonstrate the larval stages? The other, uh, okay, the Bayerman technique suspension can also be used. We can also use the beaver damp gauze pad technique method. So the beaver beaver method is sim- is a modification of uh, a modification of the Bayerman technique, but it uses uh, <coughs> but it aside but it's much more rudimentary because you're using only a ga- gauze pad. So do sa gauze pad instead of filter paper, tatagus lang siya sa gauze pad. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, uh, the most dominant species of hookworm in the Philippines. I forgot to mention this one in my previous lecture. I think, Sir Marco. So, uh, this is a recent edit. In the Philippines, sushal tayo. Alright? We have Necator Americanus as the most common. Alright? Necator Americanus is the most common hookworm infection in the Philippines. According to the Research Institute of Tropical Medicine. Okay? It might have been subjected to change. Okay? Sir Marco, please inform your students that this might be a question in your board exams. Okay? In the Philippine board exams. Because our main focus okay. in... Uh, Hello. Okay. All right. So yeah, this was this was a question in the previous board exam. I think 2017 or 2018. I'm not sure, but I was already in Saudi Arabia when somebody told me this this question. All right. Now let's talk about. One item lang naman. Huh? Ano? Hindi nila ikakapag. One item lang. Hindi nila ikakapag sak na. Malay malay mo itano. Remember, sir, Mark, what I told them earlier. You gotta appreciate every point that you have in the exam. Yeah. Ano ano nag Alam ko ba ako mag below 50 no tas fourth pasado lahat 49 yung para. Oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bagsak pa rin ng board exam. <laughs> Parang gusto ko just ko gusto ko na lang magbigte kung ganoon no. So you got to appreciate every every point that you have. Kaya we the reason the reason why I'm being specific on some terms is because I want you guys to appreciate every question. Kaya nga ang question ko lagi is case presentation tapos Ano nga yun? May follow-up question. So, pag mali ka dun sa initial question, mali ka na sa lahat. ba? Or, nakatama ka nga, pero, swerte lang yung hula mo. ba Sir Marco? <laughs> Meron kasi kami mm-hmm. mga... 25% chance naman na makatama. So... <laughs> Oo, may chance, may 25% chance ka pa rin makatama. Kasi kung hindi mo alam yung initial question, di ba hula ka na lang mm-hmm. dun sa subsequent questions? ba? Ganon. So, tapagal, it depends. Luck-based yung ano mo. Pwede ba yun? Pupunta ka sa may board exam mo, lock ang ano mo, lock ang ano mo. Hindi pwede, no? Hindi ako magagalit ako sa mga students ko kapag sinabi, Swe- Sir, sw- swertehin tayo. Hindi, sasampalin ko kayo. Hindi pwede sw- eh, swerte. Okay? Pupunta ako doon sa ano. Saan ba, ba? Saan ba ang exam area? Sa Manila, Quezon, Man- 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 Quezon Univer- University pa rin ba? MLQU pa rin ba? Depende, sir. Namumove siya from time to time. Ah, namumove na siya? Kasi nung time kami, parang MLQU lagi eh. So, namumove na Ako sa NU, ako na nag-exam eh. Ah, sa normal university, sa Philippine normal, sa NU, or normal, normal university ba yun? NU, uh, national. <laughs> ah, national, sorry. Iba pala yung PN, PNU pala yung nasa isip ko. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, anyway, let's continue. Let's talk about strongyloides and versus hookworm larva. Okay, so this is one of the key points that you need to remember in your exams because they might give you, uh, they might give you a case of a patient. Now, um, first thing that you need to look at is the buccal cavity of Strongyloides tercoralis versus the hookworm larva. The, <coughs> the structure you observe in this stage is, of course, the rabditiform stage when you're looking at the buccal cavity. So that's the answer to the second, the second bullet. Okay? So usually, we observe this in the rabditiform larval stage. And for hookworms, it is long. Okay? For 
strongyloides circoralis, it's short. So when you're talking about the buccal cavity, yung bunganga, okay? Buccal cavity, bunganga. Kaya ang ginagamit kong terminology is bunganga. I know it sounds colloquial, but I want you guys to remember as much stuff as you can in this lecture. Please, Amanda. I'm talking to you, Amanda, kasi you are the person who always likes to ask for shortcuts and easy to remember things. So buccal cavity, bunganga. Mas malaki kay hookworms, mas maliit kay strongyloides circularis. How how can I remember this easy, sir? So, because I'm not very good at memorization, according to Amanda. So, Amanda, tandaan mo lang, short for S, S is strongyloides circularis. Walang kakwenta-kwenta, pero hopefully makatulong. Diba? Ganon. Yung bunga nga ni strongyloides circularis, S. Ano yung S? Short yun. Ano yung, ano yung ino-observe nating stage? Rabditiform larva stage. Eh, paano kung nagkamali ka doon sa initial question? Hindi pala rabditiform larva yung tinitignan. Allah, nagkamali si Amanda. <laughs> Kasi puro memorization lang. Ayan, aray Diyos ko, Rudy. <laughs> aray Diyos ko, Rudy, Amanda. <laughs> Alright, next. Genital primordium of hookworms. And uh, let's differentiate the genital primordium. Basically, this is the, the copulatory spikes, of course. I'm oh, sorry, the genital primordium is different. But copulatory spikes is different. Pala. Uh, the genital primordium is basically the circular patterns, observe, a circular pattern observed in the, uh, in the, in the rabditiform larval stages. Uh, sorry, the filariform larva and the rabditiform larval stages. So it can be seen on both. And this stage, is, the structure that you're, you're going to observe is that in hookworms, it's short and in, inconspicuous. Meaning, hindi na nakikita. Who did? O, ayan. Ayan na, ha. Ayan, binibigyan na din kita ng shortcut na naman, Amanda. When we're, when we're talking about the... Uh, <coughs> sorry. Sorry. Sandali lang, ubo lang. Alright. I'm ready na ulit. Okay, so for hookworms, it's short and inconspicuous. Who did? Ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya tuli. Okay. Yung hookworms, hindi pa tuli yung genital primordium niya. Kaya nga, pag sinabi, bakit tuli ang ginagamit kong terminology? Kasi the genital primordium it's, is what we're talking about here. Pag si, ano, pag si strongyloides tercoralis, prominent and conspicuous. Ibig sabihin, tuli. Okay? Clear, Amanda? Alright? So, babalik ta rin mo lang. Hindi S ang gagamitin mo dito kay strongyloides tercoralis. Tule, ST, okay? Hindi S ha, hindi supot. Okay, ang supot, si hookworms. Okay, clear? Clear, Amanda? Hooded. Okay, naka-hood. Okay? Sino ba may hood dyan? Mark, meron ka bang hood ngayon? Okay, tama sa kanya kung anong itsura ng, ng supot. Ayan, o ba? Diba? Ganyan yung genital primordium. Para si Jenilyn din. Jenilyn, bakit patingin mo nga kay Amanda para, para, para clear lang kay Amanda. Okay. Ngayon si James, pakita mo sa kanya. Charot lang. Charot lang. Go na tayo sa susunod. <laughs> Go na tayo sa susunod. Next na tayo. Char lang yun. Ano ba guys? Gusto ko lang kayo maging. Kasi nakaantok na si ano eh. Inaantok na si, si Miss Sabado eh. Gusto ko lang makita kasi ni Amanda kung ano talaga yung ano. Teka lang, nasa na ba yung partner mo, James, na isa pang ano, parang mga kalukuhan? Nasa na yung isa mong kasama? Absent ba yon yung ka-riding in tandem mo. Wala wala yung wala yung ka-riding in tandem mo. Si James ang ka-riding in tandem mo. Ano pangalan no nakalimutan ko? What's his face na lang ang tawag namin ni Sir Marco? Si, si Arnie po. Wala si Arnie ngayon. Nasa si Arnie? Yung ka-riding oh, in wala. tandem. Wala. Bakit wala siya? Sir Marco, pakibigyan nga ng minus 5. Chari. <laughs> charot lang, charot lang. All right. Now we're looking for the tails. Okay, you're looking for the tails. Of course, you need to think of the hookworms. It's pointed for hookworms. And for strongyloides tercoralis, it's notched. Please make sure you understand filariform larva. Okay? The filariform larva. Okay? So we're looking at the larval stages. So for hookworms, it's pointed. For strongyloides tercoralis, it's notched. Okay? Now, meron din tayong tinatawag na sheath. Yung parang may nakatago. Okay? So si hookworms, sabi ko nga sa'yo kanina, hindi pa tuli. Okay? Amanda, hindi pa tuli. Alright? Short and incon inconspicuous nga siya eh. At saka meron siyang sheath. Okay? Meron siyang sheath. Okay? Hindi ano ha, baka mamaya meron na naman mga pilosopo dito eh. Hindi ano, ito yung spelling ko ng sheath ha. Sheath. Hindi yung, eh, hindi yung I ha. 
wag kay wag, wag, wag mark ha alam ko talaga pinipiloso pinipiloso po mo ako all right baka mamaya tumatawa tawa ka na naman diyan okay so si Hook Corps talaga since suput nga siya meron siyang sheath or merong hood hooded siya support so mer- so usually may mga nakatok may nakatakip sa kanya now at what temperature will you allow the larva to develop uh the, would allow the larval development of hookworms uh and strongly storcoralis in stool sige sino makakasagot temperature so from ova to larva ay ah, sorry from rhabditiform larva to filariform larva what temperature sino makakasagot this one is this one is Commonsensical, I suppose. Body temperature. Body temperature, sino nagsabi nun? Sino, sino nagsabi? Hindi ko narinig. Eliza po. Ay, Eliza. Okay. What about freezing temperature? Meron magsasagot ng freezing temperature? What about room temperature? Wala magsasagot? Wala, wala, wala. Confident na tayo kay Eliza? Everybody, if, if you guys are confident, please show your thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Si Nigel, thumbs up din. Amanda, ikaw? Thumbs up ka ba or no? Thumbs up, sige. Tingnan natin ha. Tingnan natin kung tama talaga si Aman- si Eliza. Unfortunately, Amanda, uh, Eliza, everybody, you dragged everybody to the ground. It is room temperature, Amanda. I'm terribly sorry, girl. Don't worry. You did not win the prize, but, but thankfully, you participated. Because why? 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 Because if you mistake, make mistakes here, you will remember your mistakes. Diba? Right? So it doesn't matter to me. Now, let's talk about Trichinella spiralis. Okay? Now, we're moving towards the tissue nematodes. And I don't think we have time for the other tissue nematodes. But let's try to finish until Trichinella spiralis. Okay? What is the common name for Trichinella spiralis? Anybody here? Oh, yeah. Common name, girl. Common name, girl. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Muscle worm or garbage worm. Okay. What's the other one? Sorry, I didn't quite hear the other one. Muscle and garbage worm. Garbage worm. Okay. All right. The, that's the first time I'm hearing of the garbage worm. All right. But anyway, let's see. The common name for that one is the trichina worm. <laughs> the muscle worm is okay also. But the garbage worm, I'm not sure where you got that. Um, Sir Marco, you can enlighten the class later when... Why it's the garbage worm? I pro- I'm assuming you got it from. Uh, I'm assuming you got it from your professors. But yeah, um, it's actually the trichina worm or the uh, sorry, the trichina worm or your muscle worm. And the cause, the, the disease is called trichinosis, not trichiniasis. I uh, not trichuriasis. So please don't confuse this. When I was a student, I selected I selected the wrong answer. I was still a student. Remember, when you're a student, you're allowed to make mistakes. But in the exam, I as, I, I urge you not to make a lot of mistakes, okay? So, uh, trichini- trichino- trichinosis, of course. In the United States, it's usually trichinosis. In the UK, if you look at the UK books, UK microbiology books, you would see trichiniasis, okay? In US-based books, it's trichinosis. Even in case presentations made by uh, made by ASCP, it's usually trichinosis. But I added it there. Say, lagay lang ng lagay. Ika nga ni Ma'am Lea Navarro. Lagay lang ng lagay. Anyway, hindi naman ako mag-aaral niyan. It's basically the same thing. Okay? Next. Infective stage of trichinella spiralis in humans. Anybody knows what the, what the infective stage of trichinella spiralis is? Eliza. Insisted larvae. Very good. On where? Where where you're speaking about something insisted? Where is it insisted? Is it insisted on the stool? Is it insisted on the urine? Is it insisted on spew? Blood. Blood. Anybody who wants to help out Eliza this Sabado? Muscle. Muscle. Specific. So where do you get it? So I think I know where your where where your garbage worm. Uh, where your garbage worm comes from na. Okay? So, I'll give you the answers, guys. The correct answer is insisted larva on meat or muscle fibers. Right? So, on meat or muscle fibers. The diagnostic stage is, of course, the insisted larva also on muscle biopsies. Okay? Now, true or false question. I'm going to, send, I'm going to ask a true or false question. This is not included in my lectures here. I want you to write the, the correct answers. True or false. Humans are the definitive hosts of 
trichino that tri uh, trichino worm. True or false? Kailangan natin maano siya. Kailangan natin siyang malaman. Alright? True or false? Humans are the definitive Humans are the DF. Are the DF na lang. Para hindi mahaba. The DF of Trichinella Spiralis. Ayan. So you guys can answer that one whilst we're discussing, whilst we go, whilst I'm waiting for your answers. So we're going to move on with the next slides. Okay. Now, well, we're going to skip this one. Um, hang on a sec. <laughs> lang, lang. All right. Uh, three phases of human trichinosis. All right. So let's talk about true human trichinosis. There are three phases of human trichinosis. Of course, there is incubation and intestinal invasion. Larval migration, uh, a larval migration from one point to the muscles, and encystment and encapsulation. So there are three phases. I basically just summarized this one. It's actually one page in a microbiology book. So I just summarized this one. There are so many things that that happens in between, but what you guys need to remember is that each stage has its own importance. Incubation stage is where the larva develops. All right, the larva when the larva is ready to go to a specific part of the body in in humans, of course, it's in the muscle that is known as muscle invasion, and then encystment occurs because everybody answered false. Yes, encapsulation happens. What causes encapsulation? Patay na kalibutan na naman nila. Balikan natin yung example natin kanin kanin umaga ay kanin ng banghale. Ano nangyayari kapag ka ang isang bagay ay hindi mapatay ng immune system natin? Nag-granuloma po. Very good. Granuloma formation. Pero in the muscles, it becomes encapsulated because it's not rich with blood. Uh, the, blood uh, the blood vessels, it's not rich with blood vessels, right? It's not that rich with blood vessels as opposed to a skin biopsy or a, a connective tissue biopsy. So nag-encapsulate lang siya, right? So basically, it's still, it's still granuloma formation. You could see granuloma formation. But the main difference is that it's in the muscles. Okay? So, encystment and encapsulation. What's the difference between a cyst and an encapsulated one? A cyst basically is the initial form. It's not yet filled with a lot of, uh, with a lot of WBCs around it. An encapsulated one is where the fibrin, tissues, uh, fibrin, uh, fibrin structures were made by the white blood cells. Yang granuloma formation. Now, what structure in the adult morphology of Trichinella spiralis differentiates male from females? Of course, kailangan malaman ninyo na meron din silang genital parts. The, the males have a conical papilla while females have a club-shaped uterus. And they do, they do copulate, of course. My terminology is copulate. But if you want to be lit or if you want to go with the generations, my term is this. Okay? Just read it. They have blank. They have that. Okay? Ganyan na ngayon yung uso sa Facebook eh. Ay sa YouTube eh. They have blank. They have that. Okay? I can't say that because you know, alam mo naman Mark, we might get demonetized. Okay? Now, what is the reproductive behavior of Trichinella spiralis females? They are larviparous or viviparous. The larva comes out of the organism rather than ova. Okay? Next. What is the characteristic shape of Trichinella spiralis? <coughs> of the Trichinella spiralis larva, it is spear-like with a burrowing anterior tip. Okay, so it's spear-like and it has a burrowing anterior tip. That's the reason why it can go through muscle fiber. All right, it can go through muscle fiber. Next, the diagnostic tests that can be used for Trichinella spiralis. Pwede ba tayong gumamit ng Pwede ba tayong gumamit mark ng stool analysis kahit na, pag, kahit na ingestion of infected meat? Very good. Very good. So, what is our diagnostic test? Biopsy. Biopsy. Ma muscle biopsy po. Very good. Pero ano pa yung iba? We could use serological diagnosis. Or diagnosis. Diagnosis. Right? We could use serological diagnosis. We could also use xenodiagnosis. Pwede tayong kumuha ng insisted larva tapos e Animal inoculation natin siya. Specifically what? Animal. 
mga baboy. Okay? Mga baboy. Zeno diagnosis. Okay? So, muscle biopsies, serological analysis, and zeno diagnosis. Okay? Alright, now. Alright, now. What are the two classifications of serological tests for Chiquidella spiralis? We can use two out of the three. Okay? Uh, sorry, we can use three. Uh, we have two classifications. There is in vitro and in vivo testing. All right. If you're using in vitro, there are three examples. All right. There are three examples written here. What are the three ones? We have CAT, CE, CFT, ELISA, bentonite flocculation. Whilst in, in vivo, you use Bachmann intradermal test. It's basically the test uh, is usually it's basically the skin test that you would get uh, or that you would that we would give to you the Mantu test it's similar to that one but you're using Tichidella spiralis antigens okay purified of course all right so this one CFT what is CFT baka baka may hindi pa rin nakakaalam na CFT nakaabot na ng internship patay tayo diyan CFT. Nag-google ka, nakikita ko sa salamin mo, Mark. <laughs> Pero okay lang. It's okay. Hoy, nakaabot kayo ng third year. Magagalit talaga sa inyo si Sir Marco. What is it? What's CFT? Nako. Amanda, hindi kasama sa mga ano mo. Amanda, hindi kasama sa mga ano mo. Patay tayo dyan. It's complement fixation test. Alright? Complement fixation test. Okay? So please be mindful of... But, but, please don't tell me you guys don't know what Eliza is. I will... I, kukulamin ko kayong... 20, 29 na tao ang kukulamin ko. 28... 20, 20, 27 lang pala. Kasama pala si Scar Marco doon. Huwag naman. Okay. So, uh, what's Eliza? Sige. Papatayin ko talaga kayo. Papatayin ko talaga kayo. Lalabas na naman ang ilongga accent ko, ha? Nagigigil na naman ako sa inyo, ha? What is... What is Eliza? Oh, immunology is serology review. Okay, Maria K. Sabado. Fresh from Google. Alright. And when we immunosorbent assay. The reason why I know it's from Google is because you're unsure of your answer. But that is the correct answer. Thank you so much. All right, bentonite flocculation. Basically, you're using um, you're using bentonite as a carrier protein, as a carrier molecule, not uh, not protein. It's a carrier molecule. It's the same thing, but you're using a you're using a carrier protein to produce flocculation or to produce a flock. All right, next, uh, the agent that we use for um, the reagent that we use for Bachmann test or the IDT or the intradermal test for chikinosis is of course the antigen from Tichinella spiralis. The dilution is as follows. It's 1 to 5,000 to 10,000. The positive result is erythema at the site of injection at 30 minutes, after 30 minutes. Okay? Erythema after 30 minutes. The term for the zero diagnostic test is Bex Zeno diagnosis. Hindi yan yung mga bakla. Okay? You can use pigs, but in la, eh, because we are you because, because we are limited to the usage of pigs, sayang naman yung mga baboy, we can also use albino rats. Okay? Yun yung mga genetically modified na mga organisms. Okay? Bex zero diagnosis. You're using albino rats, and then you're going to kill them. You're going to take their muscle organ, their muscle biopsies, and then we check for bi we check we check the muscle biopsies. Ang habang proseso, no, guys. Ang habang proseso. So, that's uh, actually used for research purposes. Pwedeng, pwedeng baboy, pwedeng albino rats. Uh, but what you need to remember is Bex zero diagnosis. Okay? Now, what is the most common preventive measure to avoid trichinosis? Ayan na. This is a question from, uh, this is a question that was posed to us when we were, when we were reviewing parasitology, post, a postgraduate parasitology course. Most common preventive measure. Sige. Cooking meat properly. Okay. Most common. Alright, most common. Cooking meat properly is actually not in the top of the list. On the top of the list is actually this one. <laughs> this one is the most... Uh, I, was, I was confused also. Why? Why cooking meat? 
Why? I will explain to you why, Mark. Ha? Why? Because some some cooks or some chefs they have what you call, uh, especially in the United States or Euro in other European countries, they enjoy what type of cooking, uh, what type of cooking, uh, uh, grilling methods. Pala. They have grilling methods. They employ grilling methods. Actually, in the Philippines, tayo lang naman yung may, tsaka other Asian countries, tayo lang naman mahilig yung deep fry, di ba? Pag inisip natin na deep fry, tsaka pa yung nakukuluan, Pinoy yon at tsaka ano, strictly Pinoy yon. But for European countries and for, um, for, um, American countries or North American countries, they usually have grilled meats. Okay? So, there is a tendency that some people would request a medium rare. Di ba? Yung mga ganon. Mga medium rare. Alright? Although, for for pig products, okay, for bovine products, it is obviously deep fried kasi talaga mas masarap talaga siya. Pero, there are some, there are some people who, who do not cook the, who do not cook the meat properly. And the best way for people to prevent infections with uh, infection of infections for trichinella spiralis is to freeze it why because it inactivates the in, in the it activates the infected meat basically that is what happens when you what would you do freezing so much better of freezing okay in this case in this case okay all right so cooking kasi pag bacterial pag bacterial yes sir marco Ay, mag-asalita na pa lang sana ako. Oh, sige, uh, ano lang, <laughs> pumipiyok pa. So, it act, uh, in regarding sa mga, ano, no, mga medium, rare, it actually depends on the cut of the beef. Ay, patay tayo. Okay, so, if it's something... Pinapakita ni Sir yung so pagiging affluent. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it's something like filet mignon, <laughs> uh, medyo... <laughs> It's uh, the the lowest that you can go is medium, so it's usually rare to medium, but depending. And so something like a New York strip, uh, that's usually pretty medium well, but never well done. So guys, sakitan yun na kung pagano tayo na kumukha mahirap, no class. Kung pa tayong mahirap lahat, <laughs> so, so, guys. Yeah, so if the person if the person knows yung cuts ng steaks uh -oh. nila, uh, they would know the proper temp. Oh, okay. okay. But remember for pork and chicken, walang, under, walang, walang medium wala, well. Wala, wala. It's always well done for pork and chicken. Yes, yes. Kaya nga sabi ko sa kanila, freezing talaga. Kasi nga, baka mamaya, undercooked lang siya ng frying. Diba? Malamig pa pala yung loob. <laughs> Alright? So, yan. Um, kaya talaga kaya... So, sorry naman. Sorry mo. naman. Oo. Oh, oh, kaya kaila. <laughs> Nagbuka tayong mahirap lahat, guys. No, Alam nyo ba, kaila, nung, um, kailangan ko pang umalis ng Pilipinas para makakain ng filet mignon. Kasi hindi kaya ng sahod ng metek ang filet mignon dyan sa Pilipinas. Dito ko lang natikman sa Saudi Arabia yon. Would you believe it? ba? Diba? Meron pa siyang medium rare. Tapos mga cuts ng meat. Guys, gosh. I feel so poor. ba? Diba? Sir, question. Trichinella po ba? Sa nakikita din sa ano rin? Beef? No. Ay, beef no, it's, mas, ano? it's more or less in pigs. Okay. Mo mostly pigs, but iba kasi yung issue nyo for beef. It's uh -oh. a different kind of worm. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's a different worm. <laughs> Which we'll talk about next week. Alright, so we're going to end the discussion here. Uh, next uh, next week, we're going to talk about uh, the other tissue or parasites, Angiostrongulus continensis. We're going to start with Angiostrongulus continensis. You guys study up. Hopefully, we filled out some of the, blank in the blanks in those forms. And fill out makaya whilst you guys were listening. I only saw my third daughter, Janeline Marzan, who is actually filling up her forms. Uh, I don't know if that's my it's those if that is my forms, but please, 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 please do do not forget to answer those things. Um, uh, a lot of my students from the past have attested that this was a great help because they didn't really need to study it. They they didn't really need to study parasitology. If you know a lot of the blanks there, you already are going to have you we already have a 35 percent uh not the 35 percent chance um like a 75 percent chance of passing parasitology anyway that's it for me for today hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully you had fun because i want to take i want to make education fun um good luck and see you guys next week bye